Do you want to talk, Pete? Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Hello, you hearing me in there, Damon? Cheers. Thanks, mate. Yep, thank you. Good morning from Hobart, Australia, and excitement is building here on the Derwent River because this is Andu Comanche, the 100-footer who took line honours last year, has just gone through, past the Iron Pot, into the Derwent River, less than 11 miles now to the finish. And there's an armada of boats out there on the water. Lisa Darmanin will be out there as well. But alongside me is the voice of Australian sailing, Peter Shipway. Yes. Great excitement here on the doing. Yeah, good morning, Gordon. Good morning, everyone. What a sight, eh? She's in the river, about 10 miles to go, uh, round the Iron Pot, and I, we believe she's about a mile ahead of Law Connect. Uh, but there's little or no wind in the river further up near Hobart, where we are. You can see in the background, it's very calm. So still a lot to play, I think. Yeah, so very, um, we've seen races won and lost in the Derwent River. It, it can be a nightmare. And there is Andu Comanche, uh, pointing towards the finishing line at Castre Esplanade at the moment. Yeah, there's reasonable breeze there at the moment, Gordon. I think probably five, six, seven, eight knots, and she's making reasonable time. You can see that massive reaching code zero headsail up there, and uh, that's what she's looking at, the, uh, the town of Hobart in the distance, about 10 miles to go. But we'll get an update from Lisa, but she looks as though she's doing probably eight or nine knots, which is, which is pretty good speed in these conditions and uh, it's going to take a big effort for Law Connect to uh, get the job done now but uh, this river could still play a trick or two. Yes well let's uh, take you out on the water now with Lisa and uh, there's there's a man up the mast what's happening there Peter? He's the wind spotter yeah no doubt about that he's looking for those puffs or more importantly looking for the holes in the wind where there might not be any wind. Well there's, it's very light up here near the finishing line so that's a very important role but Lisa take it away. Well, you can see I'm um, out here. Andrew Comanche is just they're just starting to heel over. The crew, the crew members are moving from windward to leeward, so they're really managing the gusts and lulls out here. So they're all shifting. They've got some really nice pressure at the moment. I obviously came out from from the. Um, right up the river and it's a lot lighter there. It's really patchy as well. So it's going to be about trying to link those pressures together. Um, they're in really nice breeze. This is probably the best breeze out here. And you know, it's quite heartbreaking. You can see Law Connect um, right behind me. They can see all these boats following, but I don't think it's over. I know that these guys have a really good lead, but once they get up the river a little bit more, I think they're gonna get a lot lighter and that, that distance will, 
ball narrow, but it's just whether Andu can really defend. Obviously, you'd much rather be in that position, but yeah, they're healing over now in really nice pace, probably doing about 12 knots, um, and yeah, maybe like eight, eight, eight to 10 knots of breeze in the, in the puffs out here at the moment. And where at the moment uh, is Law Connect? So Law Connect is, um, we can probably you can see, see her, her in the background around, at the moment, um, yeah. You can see her in the background, yeah. So she's she's round the iron pot as well, and 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 well um well able to see what's happening ahead. And 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 to be honest, I I think that's actually, you know, you want to be in front, but if you're behind like that in a into a dying breeze, you can kind of see where not to go. So it'd be tough for them right now being able to see all this, but at least they are in striking distance. Anything can happen as we get up there because. I think we probably got maybe another 10 minutes and then we're starting to go into that light, lighter wind um, and, and that'll be really where it's about to play. But I can see, um, I'm not sure if you'll see from the camera, but right up the top, um, someone's right on the masthead of Andu Comanche um, having a good look at, at, at what's ahead and what they'll be sailing into because obviously they want to be able to Every second, every minute is going to count here. So making sure that they're approaching up the river on the right side. Um, to me, as they're approaching, I think the left-hand side. Um, so I think that's the, the western shore is going to have more breeze. Um, that's what it was about half an hour ago. So I, I think they'll be up there trying to spot, spot um, what the next move is. OK, Lisa, we'll be coming back to you uh, during these final stages. But Peter Shipway, just to give you an idea of the height of that mast, um, that barely fits underneath the, the carriageway of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. There's only a, a few metres clearance, so it's a long way up there. Yeah, rather them than me, really. <laughs> but it's interesting, um, they've really had a ding-dong battle, these two, right from the starting line, uh, what, two days ago in Sydney Harbour. And uh, even this morning, or earlier, much earlier this morning, they were basically together at Tasman Island. Uh, when we went to bed last night, Andrew Comanche held a commanding sort of six to eight miles lead, which is commanding in between these two boats. But Law Connect caught right up, and uh, they went round Tasman basically together. But uh, now Andrew Comanche's got the jump again. But she's not laying that point, so she will have to tack by the look of it to me. But good speed there. You can see the... Uh, the wake coming away, and especially from the windward rud uh, rudder. Um, the crew, majority of them up the bow, because what they do is try and get the, the stern out of the, out of the water somewhat to, to re uh, reduce the drag on the boat. Um, as this wind picks up, the crew will move aft and then on the side of the boat to give the boat a bit more stability. And uh, she's got that massive Hedsel up there and raking really good time. And when we get the other shots, the distance shots, you can see the speed of the power boats following her. That gives you a good idea of, of how quick she is travelling at the moment. Well, Peter G's out on the end of the King's Pier, the floating marina, where most of the yachts in this year's race will be berthing. Peter, uh, conditions certainly a lot lighter uh, as we are closer to the finishing line. Good morning, Gordon. Good morning, everyone. And yes, uh, it is a beautiful morning in Hobart. If you're not trying to get to the finish line of the Rolex Sydney Hobart in a hurry, there's virtually no breeze now. There was a light zephyr uh, 10, 15 minutes ago, but uh, as you can see, almost uh, a mill pond out on the River Derwent as we look from the uh, first finger wharf of the uh, Kings Pier where Andrew Comanche looks like being the first to tie up but uh, looking across to the finish line you see the uh, research vessel investigator there just uh, masking the southern end of the line but you can see the uh, yellow buoy there which marks the top end of the finishing line off Castrae Esplanade. Uh, the wharf starting to wake up now as the word gets around that the uh, the leading super maxis are coming down the river so uh, in under an hour, there should be uh, more people here. We uh, can see some over on the Elizabeth Street side of the pier here. You're live around the world, people. Give us a good wave. <laughs> so uh, a little bit sedate at the moment, but things will hot up very shortly, I'm sure. Gordon. Yes, Peter, um, and, and Peter Shipway and your um, 31 Sydney Hobarts, You've seen this scenario, um, you've covered many races, but 
um, it's not over till the fat lady sings, although there's a, a nice lead for Andrew Comanche. The fact that there's very little breeze uh, closer to the finishing line makes it absolutely fascinating. Yeah, well, it's going to get slower rather than quicker, I think, mm. as uh, we saw those shots from Pete out on the dock. Um, yeah, it's still still tricky, um, but at the moment I'd like to be where Comanche yeah. is and not where Law Connect is, that's for sure. And uh, uh, there's the, the crew. They've moved aft now, which is a sign that the breeze has picked up a little. You can see them on the side, and they probably don't know whether they're laying through or will have to tack. I look as though they might be setting up to tack, and they'll, as we go up, 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 and up, and up, <laughs> and up. There he is. There's the wind spotter. And he would be in uh, radio contact with the crew below, just saying, you know, should go left, should go right, or should go keep going. And uh, just to spot, as I said earlier, more importantly, where the wind is not, rather than where the wind is. Well, she's, she looks as though she's lifting nicely there, so at the moment I don't think she's going to have to tack for a while, if at all. I'm remembering she's got to pass the John Garrow Shoals to port, and that's about a couple of miles from the finish, so she's a fair way from that at the moment. The speed is still good and uh, things are looking pretty good for Comanche to gain her fifth line honours win in the Rolex Sydney Hobart race. Remembering she won in 2015 as Comanche for Jim and Christy Clark, then in 2017 for Jim Cooney as LDV Comanche, 2019 again for Jim Cooney and uh, then last year as you said Andu Comanche for John Winning Jr and of course in 2017 she set the uh, the course record of uh, one day and nine hours and to break that she would have had to finish at quarter past ten last night so she's a so long way away ten from hours, that. Yeah, ten hours outside the, moment. the but record it looks at the to moment. me again a bit lighter there Gordon boats a little bit more upright spectator boats and uh, press boats have slowed down and uh, she's probably got about seven or eight miles to go and uh, it may be an opportunity, just a slight opportunity for Law Connect to, to pounce, but um, the trailing boat in these circumstances is going to find it very hard, I think. She would have to really take a different tack, a, a direction up the river to, to try and uh, get some leverage away from Andu Comanche. At the moment, it's going to be very difficult. Well, you've got two of the, the best navigators in the world, um, two international navigators, two American yeah. Navigators yeah. with these yeah. two 100 footers. Yeah. Justin what Schaefer on, of, yeah. on, on um, Andy Comanche and Chris Lewis on, uh, on uh, Law Connect. But also, the other thing is that two world class tacticians, both Australians. We've got Ian Murray on Andy Comanche um, and Chris Nicholson on Law Connect, both former Australian Yachtsman of the Year, both former Olympians. Um, both have won line ons before in this race. So, um, you know, we're, we're talking about a lot of talent. We're talking, about, we're talking about sailing royalty, aren't yeah, we? Uh, yeah. Particularly with the Australian. And um, Ian Murray, nine line on his victories with uh, Wild Oats 11. So yep. he's up to 11 now. Seve Jarvin's on board, um, Andrew Comanche. Yep. And Mothy uh, Jarvin has 14 line on his victories. That's Seve's so, father, yes. Yes, yeah. Seve's father. And he's so, on URM. So, yeah. you, so Ian Murray is closing on Mothy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. If they get there, they've got to get there. Yeah, Pete. exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but I'd like to be where they are yep. at the moment. But uh, Let's have a look at the tracker, Pete. Okay, and, um, we'll have a look at the I tracker. I know you love looking at the tracker and, and taking us through the logistics of the well, situation. That's obviously the two, um, the two leaders now in the very much firmly in the river. Um, but the real play is uh, outside, I guess. Um, no one else is around Tasman. Um, but we're looking now that the next couple of boats to round if I can find them Gordon somewhere where are they know, well they should them. be uh, closing yeah they're coming in from a long way out to sea yeah here they go here we go, here we go. Uh, that's money penny but I'm further out to the east ah here we are here we are this is the boats I'm looking for we've got alive and uh, URM there's the, those two boats there they are uh, still well out from Tasman Island um, and they, these two boats here along with Money Penny are the three will be the three leaders on handicap I think um, we'll have a look at the standings now it's just Money see. Penny leading on handicap at the moment yes but from she, Alive she's, and taking, she's a lot further to the north and not as much to the east so we'll just have a look at the standings at the moment 
Um, so there's obviously Andrew Comanche and Law Connect at the top of the list, 6.6 .6 and 8.6. So that's show, or 8.4. So showing just under two miles ahead. And look at a live speed at the moment, 16 yeah, knots. Yeah, they've got the Southerly out there. Tasman Island, uh, last time I looked, was showing about 10 knots. But you get round Tasman and the tricks of the bay will take over for sure. But a live 98.4 to go, uh, URM 98. Point eight. Point 0.8, yes. So that is so close, yeah. 4.4. 4. And then Money Penny has dropped off a little. She's now five miles behind because her attack at Tasman is very different to Alive and URM. They went well to the east. Uh, Money Penny stayed, if you like, a little bit more to the north. So they've got a much better angle of attack to come in. And you can see the speed they're doing. And um, Money Penny's down at 7.4 to not. So a lot to play for handicap, but we'll come back to that later. Yes. I think let's concentrate now on the Dermot River. Well, certainly with Alive there, uh, the local Tasmanian knowledge, the Tasmanian boat, uh, will know every bit of water here in Storm Bay and the Derwent. But here is Andrew Comanche, John Winning Jr. John Winning Sr. is on board. So is his daughter, Jamie. It's very much a family affair, and they're going for back-to-back -back victories. And at the moment, Law Connect in the, the background there, trailing by about a mile, um, facing a bridesmaid finish for the fourth race in a row. Well, there she is, Law Connect. That that water there is not driven by the wind, let me tell you. <laughs> it's driven by the power boats. Um, I'm sure the boats would like, or certainly Comanche would like to see that sort of wake it from the wind, but it's uh, quite calm now, it's getting softer. You can see the power boats are slowing down and uh, they're staying well behind Comanche, not to affect her at all with the, the waves. Because even these big boats can get affected by the waves and that's some of the craft, the media. There's the police launch there in close, getting a good view for those boys. But there's Law Connect barreling along. And this, this race is not over, but uh, you'd have to say that Andrew Comanche, at the moment, in control, very much. And uh, I can guarantee you, Ooh, Peter, getting that... Getting light here, Gordon, look yeah. at this. Look One man who will be watching uh, is the guy who built this boat, Jim Clark, as you mentioned, the Stanford professor. And um, he built it back in 2014, and they won online honours in 2015. And his wife, Christy Hins, the former Victoria Secret model, steered the boat over the line. And she was the granddaughter of the late Russell Hins, the former Queensland Minister for Police. But he'll be watching. I, I note he just, he was the co-founder of Netscape, and uh, he <laughs> sold his Florida mansion recently, Peter, for $250 million. So he'll have a bit of spare cash, I think, for maybe another 100-footer. OK, we'll just see how the breeze has dropped here. The headsail's well eased, so they're, and there's still that reasonable wake out of the stern. But uh, let's perhaps go to Lisa now. Give us an update from uh, alongside Andrew Comanche, Lisa. What are you seeing? Well, you called it. It certainly is dying um, where we are right now. They just did a big ease. Everyone is right up on the bow. And the reason for that is, is to try and get that big, wide stern out of the water. So, yeah, it looks like, um, to me, it looks like, I think it's Graham Taylor on the on the helm at the moment. Herman's uh, kind of been running around and, and checking in on everyone. But as you can see, um, things are pretty calm on board. Everyone's just trying to be, like, slow is smooth and, and smooth is fast right now out here on the on the River Derwent. So yeah, they're really trying to trim their sails and get everything out of it. Um, there, there isn't much ahead and, and you may be able to see, but there's a big cloud line up ahead. So right now we've got nice blue sky, but as we move further in, there's that big cloud line over where you guys are. And I think that's really what's killing the breeze. So yeah, I, I think it's gonna be really tough as they as they move, um, especially as they get towards um, Garrow's Lighthouse. That's gonna be really tough when they get there. And it's really patchy up there, but I, yeah. It's um, trying to get every single inch you can out of the boat right now. And, and they're really lucky that they've got smooth water ahead of them. As you were saying, it's, it's super flat. And right now, I think the tide's running in until about 10, 10 a.m. So it's not against them at the moment. But to try to get this big beast um, moving in the light is, is pretty tough, it seems. Lisa, I can tell you the flags are limp here at the finish. So there's, there's no <laughs> breeze, really, um, at King's Pier. And um, we'll get you to keep an eye on, on Law Connect as well, just to see if they can compress in these final stages. But I guess we're probably about, Peter, about eight miles now, eight to seven miles yeah, from the finishing line. That, Gordon, yeah, but you can see 
up ahead there's some really glass outs in that in that uh, wind which means no wind at all but uh, yeah so there we are <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. I mean, there's no wind. There's no wind. You don't go anywhere. We sit and watch, but there's, there's the live dock shot. There's no wind. So, but uh, anyway, just a little bit of history here, of course, Gordon. That as I said earlier, if if, if Andrew Comanche does get home, she'll be the fifth time that boat has won line honours under different names. If in uh, Law Connect can get home, it would be the second time that she's won line honours. She won in 2016 as perpetual loyal for Anthony Bell, and interestingly. That year, 2016, she broke the course record and Tony Mutter and Chris Nicholson, who are on Law Connect now, were on board Perpetual Loyal, as was John Winning Jr., along with Tom Slingsby, Australia's Yachtsman of the Year and World Yachtsman of the Year. So um, they're, sp they're spread between all these boats. And in the first year that Comanche won in 2015, Tony Mutter was the sailing master. So he's been on both boats for victories. But now it's slowing down. You can see those spectator boats there. Pulled the throttles back. Tony Mutter was also on the design team for this yeah, yacht in its he was. construction. So. Yes, he was. And, and, and we talked about close finishes. Um, the closest finish, as, as you've mentioned earlier, Peter, in 1982, Condor of Bermuda beat Apollo across the line by seven seconds. <laughs> so if they do compress and things get very fluky in the doing. Uh, anything can happen. I think Andrew Comanche actually has been on the receiving end of Wild Oats 11 in the Derwent when they led into the Derwent and were passed by Wild Oats 11. So anything can still happen. Yeah, that's uh, lighter, lighter, lighter. But while we we might just have a, a quick look, Gordon, at the handicap positions, which is starting to become a bit meaningful now um, because uh, boats are getting a bit closer to the finish that we've got a live narrowly leading on handicap um, there we go there there's a live Philip Turner from Tasmania uh, Money Penny and URM they're, they're in the top three at the moment with Law Connect fourth Andrew Comanche fifth and then the tiny Azuro 34 footer with Jessica Watson on board she's six but gee they've got they're not even halfway 391 miles to go I think at the moment it'll be fought out between the those top five but Law Connect rates uh, a lot lower than Andrew Comanche. You can see this figure over here, this 1.972, playing against 2.043. Now, what that means is that when the boat finishes, that's her elapsed time that she takes for the race, and they multiply her elapsed time by that decimal figure, that figure there, 1.972, to reach a corrected time figure. And so then multiply Andrew Comanche's by 2.043, Law Connect by 1.972, so being the lower figure, that'll give her a lower result. So the le the lower the, the time, um, the better off, and if you've got the lowest time, you become the corrected time winner and get the Tattersall's Cup. So just summarising there then, Peter, uh, if Andrew Comanche does take line honours and Law Connect is uh, only maybe minutes behind, yeah. they will be the clubhouse leader correct. on correct. overall time yeah. on handicap, and then a live and Money Penny and URM Group, if they can get home uh, it, within reasonable time, they will be in the box seat for the handicap honours. And remember, Alive won the race on handicap for Tasmania in 2018. And I reckon Tasmanians are getting pretty excited at the moment because Duncan Hine, Philip Turner is the owner of the boat. Um, they're in very good position. Um, That's all correct. But what will happen as soon as Andrew Comanche and Law Connect get across, uh, the the, the the website will show the time Alive has got to get to finish to win the race. So we'll have very accurate times once boats finish. So once Andrew Comanche finishes, and it's going to be a while now, look at it, slow, slow, slow. They're waving spectator boats away, I think, that crew on the bow. Um, once she finishes, we will have a time to beat, and Law Connect will know what time she's got to do to beat her on corrected time. But looking at those handicap differentials, Law Connect, I think, could be within sort of 45 minutes of Andrew Comanche to beat her on handicap. But in these conditions, 45 minutes um, <laughs> might seem a fair time, but with these light airs, you're not going to go very far in 45 minutes. So Andrew Comanche, possible a double? Who knows? I can see the um, navigator there, uh, Justin Schaefer from the United States. Just a point of interest, he was part of the leadership team that built the... 
online arm for Major League Baseball in America and uh, it became the largest live streaming facility on the internet but he left Silicon Valley he wanted to become a, a full-time sailor and uh, he keeps fit with his cross training with his foiling moth but uh, he made the comment that <coughs> the great thing about ocean racing you leave home Peter you know all about this you go out into the ocean with your crewmates and you seek the edge you're on the precipice you're in touch with nature in a pure sense and that's the way teams come together in what is a very unique environment. Well, I'd say that guy at the top of the mast in touch with nature in a pure <laughs> sense up there. He's, he'd be looking for that win now and uh, well, there's lack of wind, isn't it? She's really slowed down significantly. Or has he just come down? Have they dropped? Did I see that guy come down from? Yeah. There he is. Just came down. There he is. I'm not sure. Is that, I'm not sure it might be. It's not Peter Dean, is it? No, I don't no. think so. It might be Sven Runo. I'm not sure. Anyway, that's the, the beautiful sight of uh, Andu slowly, slowly up the river in front in this year's Rolex Sydney Hobart race, the 78th edition. And Peter and Nathan Dean are on board and they lost their dad who perished in the 1998 race. He was aboard Winston Churchill. Uh, three crew members of that boat died in that race and this is the 25th anniversary for... Peter and Nathan Dean on board here, so a very special occasion for them. And that's Ian Murray there, I think, just at uh, looking down to Leward, looking for more wind, and he would be uh, anxious, as all the other boys are. Look at them up the bow, as, as Lisa said, and we said earlier, to try and get that big wide stern out of the water. I don't know what he, Ian's just looking down to Leward to see. I think that's Ian. Yeah, that looks like Ian yes. for sure. Yeah, that's him. OK, Lisa. Um, yeah, it's certainly getting very soft now. Um, take us through the situation. So I heard you talking about um, people going up and down the rig. There is still somebody up there, but they did send somebody out um, just to trim. I I'm not exactly sure what they were doing, but on that code zero, whether it's the sheeting angle, there's a bit of movement on board. And so what I think is going to happen is they're going to be preparing to do a manoeuvre. You can see that they're telling us to get out of the way at the moment. So um, they're setting up to do a jive here. So a bit of action on board and um, got to try to clear the spectator fleet. So their speed down at the moment, Peter, looks like about five or six knots. Yeah, there's there's reasonable wake off the bow. It, yeah. it's, uh, Maybe a little there's more. There's movement, yeah. there's certainly movement. And uh, it's just rolling along nicely, but the crew look as though they're up to something, whether they're going to, they'll have to furl that headsail to get, oh, they've got another sail ready on the bow as well. You can just see it. There's someone going up the bowsprit now, right to the front of the boat, just to check the furling line is okay, I think, so they can furl if this massive headsail if they change direction. And uh, that bowsprit was the problem for Scallywag, Scallywag yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Now, they're getting ready on the runners here, so that means they're going to probably tack over. They'll ease the windward runner and pull the new runner on but uh, Ian Murray just looking around a few nerves I would think looking up to windward now here they go so they're going to furl there's the furl there's the the jibe so they're going out to the shore I think Ian has seen more wind out there and that's that's the key to this whole game, but you can just see how light it is. It took so long for that headsail to get through and filled, and they lose so much speed when they change direction like that, either jibing or tacking. So they're going across to that that eastern shore, and, uh, ooh, it's light. and it looks light further ahead. We can just see the glass out up near the garrow, but uh, look at that mainsail. It's just flopping across. They've got a, obviously, a, not obviously, but they've got a canting keel. A lot of these boats have got keels that move from side to side. And uh, they would be using that as well to, to heel the boat over. 
just to try and fill the sails and get a bit of feel in the helm. As there's the cr one of the crew members up there. He's right up there, almost at the masthead. And they're going out on starboard jibe now. Now, what we need to know is what Law Connect is doing, Gordon. Yes, we certainly do. And, so. and Lisa might be able to bring us up to date there. But these spectacular pictures coming to you from Dave Flower and the Hype Media team and going right around the world at the moment. And uh, Andu Comanche with some excruciating moments ahead, I would feel, um, as they're probably six to seven miles now from the finishing line and uh, over on that shore um, to Runa and Kingston Beach and uh, working their way up towards the finish at Castre Esplanade at Battery Point. Well, she's going about 90 degrees to the course at the moment and uh, that's what the game they're playing now. It's wind is the key. And there's Law Connect. She's, she's still got wind. You can see she's well heeled as the spectator craft are around and to Comanche. But you're talking about sailing royalty before, uh, Gordon. Got John Bertrand watching in. He just sent me a note to say he's watching. So um, there's some good sailing royalty. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. And um, I'm just thinking, uh, Grant Simmers on URM, isn't he? He is. Uh, yeah. John Bertrand's great teammate. Yes, indeed. Navigator for Australia too. Yep. 1983. Wow. Oh, his law connect, barreling along. She'd be closing this gap, there's no doubt about it, but she's going to stub a toe up here as well as soon as she gets up to where the area that um, Andu Comanche's been in. But she has got good pressure there. And, and uh, Peter, their advantage is they can see any soft spots for Andu Comanche, soft spots they have to avoid. Yeah, and it, it gives her a chance to pounce here. Um, she won't do it by following Andu Comanche. She's got to get some leverage somewhere in this river to try and beat her and that will probably mean going in a different direction. She's probably got to roll the dice now because um, Andu Comanche's a reasonable way ahead but she's got much more pressure than, than Andu Comanche at the moment and there's and there they're both in shot there. You can see that Law Connect has caught up and there's good breeze where Law Connect is between her and Andu Comanche uh, the further Andu Comanche gets up the river, the less the breeze, and that's what Law Connect is seeing. She's bringing this breeze up. Now, whether this breeze will fill in um, and get to Andu Comanche um, is another question, but looking behind us where we are here at uh, the dock, at Constitution Dock, it's, it's still very, very light. So... That gap has certainly closed. Yes, it to has. My yeah. Eye. Yeah. yeah, it's at less than a and mile, I'd say. And wind. You can see the you can see the wind on the water, and yeah. uh, at the moment, Law Connect but is just in more the, pressure. The top of that headsail on Andu Comanche is just not quite filling. You know, it's there's not enough breeze to to, to fill it, and it's uh, which means it's very light wind. But there's good breeze behind her, and that's what Law Connect is in. She's got some good puffs there. You can see that darkness on the water. So that will be really rocketing her up, and that's what's happening at the moment. Lisa, this is getting uh, very exciting indeed. They certainly are compressing. Yeah, they were always going to compress because up the river it's lighter. And I, I don't think that wind is going to fill in. I actually think that the wind's just been sitting there the whole time. Um, the wind was shifting left. So originally, Andrew Comanche got that left shift and they came right up to this western shore. And Law Connect's hitting into that now. So they're in pressure, but they're, they're not really um, running towards where they need to go. So I think it was a good time for Andrew to drive out. But I still think the team is going to compress. What's, um, sorry, the two teams are going to compress. What's super interesting, it's, it's not easy to um, manoeuvre the yachts in these conditions. Um, so they're picking up a little bit of pace at the moment, just hooked into a bit of pressure. But because it's so light, I mean, the the um, the crew member that's at the top of, of the mast was actually bouncing back and forth on the on the battens to try pop it. Um, and, and now they're actually getting up to speed. So I think when they do a manoeuvre, they lose, lose so much pace that you really want to make sure that you do it at the right time. And, and from what I'm looking ahead, um, that there is more pressure. I don't think that we're going to see a jibe in the next couple of minutes. I think they're going to hook into more pressure probably for you know the next five or so minutes and then work out when they are going to do that, that next jibe back. But I, I think it's going to compress. But, but right now, I think Andrew's got super controlling position because Law Connect is, is sort of having to follow the path because... 
um, it's a very skinny path of pressure out here that, that there is to take. And, um, yeah, it's going to be a tough one. They've just got to look for those wind patches on the water. Uh, that's why the people are up the mast. So, yeah, fascinating. Yeah, it's quietly, quietly here. They just got a bit more pressure, as Lee, uh, Lisa said there, but it's still not a lot by any means. And they're going across to that shore. I think they're trying to... You can see the crew there with a the boat hook. I think they're just trying to get the the sh windward sheet off the centreboard, the windward centreboard that is raised in these conditions, or every, or every time the windward centreboard is up, really. That's that big board that slides down to prevent the yacht slipping sideways in uh, stronger breezes. And there's Ian Murray just going back into the cockpit, and uh, looks like. GT is steering the boat. I can't see Herman winning there. There he is up on the uh, oh, there he is with on his, the port bow, with the yeah, blonde hair, on the rail. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> looking like someone out of a boy band. Yeah, well, young Herman. There's Sevy Jarvin in the in the cockpit talking to Ian. I think that might be John Winning Senior there as well. Just interesting with John Winning Senior, Peter, um, and the Dean connection. The late John Dean and John Winning went to preschool together. And now the two sons, Nathan and also Peter, are on board. So there's a huge, close family connection between the Deans and the Winnings. Yes, it's, it's lovely. And Penny Dean, their mother, she's out on one of the spectator boats with Kerry Winning, John Winning Senior's wife, and they're, they're close friends. So lovely thrill for her to see her two boys trying to get victory in this, this great race. But Will we ever get Kerry Winning? On a I, doubt it. I doubt no, it. No. Well, <laughs> this could be the last time for Comanche yeah. here, of course, Gordon. It will be, Andrew yeah. Comanche. A so three year uh, campaign now. She's packing up and uh, going back to the uh, the owners after this. So um, they could go out in glory here with a, with another victory in this race. As she looks as though she's going through another manoeuvre here, the other crew are waving the spectator boats away as she's furling that headsail. And there she goes through again. And. Just get it round that force day and then unfurl. They just lose so much time with these manoeuvres because there's such a big heavy boat, 30 plus tonnes to keep them moving. Oh, look ahead, it's light, light to but nothing really. There's absolutely no wind up at the garrow and between the garrow and the finish. They're just off uh, Taruna at the moment, which is on the, the western side of the, the Derwent River. And they'll come up towards Sandy Bay. Yeah, well, she's going into an area of no wind at all. And uh, it's going to get slower rather than quicker, I would think. Although she picked up a little bit there on that jibe. She seems to be quite quick now. But you can just see the glass out above her. Absolutely no wind on the water at all. Just looking at the flagpoles behind us here at Kings Pier, Peter, there is a little bit of breeze picking up. There's some flickering of the flags. So that may be a little more yeah, There's a little bit, yeah. yeah. But it's not a lot. Well, and in 24 or 48 hours, this dock's going to be rumbling, isn't it, with <laughs> boats coming in everywhere. But at, the, at the moment, uh, um, jangling nerves out there on Andrew Comanche. But it's a tough game, this ocean racing, and especially this Hobart race. I mean, yeah, this... Storm Bay and the Derwent River, as I said yesterday, it never lets you down. It throws something at you every time. And uh, outside the bay, a live URM group and Money Penny are in a real ding dong battle for handicap honours at this stage. They've got about 90, just over 90 miles to go, so they're about 50 miles from Tasman Island. It's 40 miles from Tasman to the finish, 30 across the bay, then 11 up the river. Just see Tasman Bridge there, that uh, famous bridge in Hobart, just in the background. And it's going to get lighter, boys. That's the bad news for you guys, I think. Yes, the Anxious end. times. Well, the Tasman Bridge nearly came down in 1974. Correct. The ship yeah. ran into it. Yeah. And looking up towards uh, the Hobart CBD on the, the left. 
big cruise liner, the, the Virgin cruise liner, departed yesterday. And I think crowds are gathering here. This is <coughs> it's a great spectacle. This and to a, the last two line honours boats, Black Jack and uh, Andrew Comanche, arrived at, at night time, about two a.m. I think, and. Uh, but to arrive in day, daytime here in Hobart is, is phenomenal. You get a wonderful reception, and the crowds are gathering already round down here at the dock. Great excitement, and even, you know it, it attracts the non-yachties, and they just it's a real part of New Year's in in Hobart to see the yachts come in, and uh, it's uh, a, a great finish to a great race. And a lot of the ocean races, many of the ocean races, or most of the ocean races around the world, don't have this sort of finish. Boats just finish, and that's it. But in Hobart. It is entirely different. And there's Law Connect in the background. She's still got the breeze. She's looking for breeze, isn't she? And she's. Are we going to have another seven it. seconds, Gordon? Do yeah, you think? Yeah, well, <laughs> anything's possible. But yeah, you mentioned um, the excitement of the finish, this unique finish on the Derwent River in Hobart. Lindsay May, who's doing his 50th consecutive Rolex Sydney Hobart on Antipodes, he's the navigator. He said this is what brings him back every year. Apart from being out there with, with mates, um, it's the finish and the reception from the people in Hobart, and we'll be covering all of that this morning, Peter. Well, if you could do the start and jump off like Lisa did at Bondi, <laughs> and, and then jump, up, jump on it, Sydney Hobart, and then jump on at the Iron Pot, you could do it every year. It'd be terrific. But <laughs> it's in between the part that's hard. I mean, I mean but it is right. You know, the finish here is, is extraordinary and, and wonderful to experience, and. Uh, Slowly, slowly, here it is. Just, she's getting into lighter air here in this glass out. And then, wonder they're, what the mood is on Law Connect, uh, Christian Beck, runner up the last three times here. And uh, they're tantalizing <laughs> close, aren't they? Boy, oh boy, one of the real nice guys of, of yachting, Christian Beck. I mean, he'd I wonder if he'll be back again if he gets another runners up prize. He may well be. Let's hope he is. Very, very good crew. But that don't, don't take nothing away from Andrew Comanche. They're a powerful, strong crew that um, throughout, you know, Sam Newton, a guy that sailed a lot with um, John Winning Jr. and his 18-footer, he sails with Tom Slingsby and Sail GP, won the America's Cup. A very, very talented yachtsman, just to name one. Seve Jarvin, a multiple 18-footer world champions. We're watching Law Connect jibe. And... Uh, Remembering they broke a furling line at the heads just after the turning mark, and uh, they've obviously fixed that as the bells peal out in Hobart Town for 7.30 here on a, a lovely morning if you're a spectator, but not a lovely morning if you're a yachtsman. There's not much breeze at all, but Law Connect has got more wind than Andrew Comanche. It's close, <laughs> Gee, it's close, isn't it? But I think it's going to take a massive effort now for Law Connect to run her down from here. Still too close for comfort as far as Andrew Comanche is concerned. Um, well, the, uh, the, the computer is showing us that uh, Andrew Comanche's doing 3.4 knots and Law Connect's doing 5 knots. So, <laughs> and the distance probably less than a mile between the two of them. What a battle, what a, what a finish. And, and off the uh, lower Tasmanian coast, Alive is doing 11 knots, URM Group doing 12 knots, and um, Money Penny closer inshore doing only 7.5 knots. And they're the three sort of pocket maxis who are in contention for the overall handicap prize. But nothing between these two 100 footers at the moment, Ooh. given these very fluky conditions. Now it looks so calm, it's got. F lighter and lighter but just to give you some idea Gordon the tail end Charlie and the 92 boats still left is a New Zealand boat called Silver Fern she's got 507 miles to go so still south east of Aladulla <laughs> heaven knows when she's going to finish and then Sil Silf 6 the two hander the, the oldest boat in the race she's east of Montague Island there's a two hander and they've got the cat on board don't forget She's got 495 <laughs> miles to go, doing four knots. Ollie the cat. Ollie yeah. the cat. Well, look. Four years old, it's its first, first time we've ever seen a cat in the Rolex Sydney Hobart. But, Lisa, 
Uh, it looks oh, to be a mill looks... pond out there at the moment. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty tough. I mean, there's not much wind, but I do really like where Andu jive. But as you can see, um, we've got Law Connect. They're probably half the distance um, between them. But the problem is there's just no opportunity out here. There's no real puff that I can see. I don't, I don't know if they can see anything at the top of the rig, but there's no real opportunity to, to try something different um, because, you know, there's no wind anywhere, really. Um, they have jived a little bit earlier than we saw Andu, um, so they are closer to that shore. Tide-wise, I'm not really sure how that's going to affect them, but I, I actually really like... I think Andu's run with the, the best pressure that they could, and in about 100 metres, it's going to be absolutely glass. Um, so, yeah, I think Wait. I think Wall Connect will close the distance more, but it's, it's going to be a drift-off to the finish line, really, and, um, yeah, not much happening. The boat's really flattened up now, um, and, yeah, it's, it's so tough. I think as a sailor... You're sitting here and you and you're willing the boat to go, but there's not much you can do except just be really patient. Um, try do everything that you possibly can w without that intent, without have the intensity, but without the um, the frustration, I guess, and and just be really patient. And you know, there was such a battle overnight, and they've done everything they could, and now they're just going to have to get those last little millimeters out of the boat and and be patient. But yeah, looking ahead, there's not much ahead. But I, Law Connect's going to run into exactly what Andu has, and. Um, uh, Unless they get something lucky on the shore, but I can't see that happening. Um, and the clouds are pr pretty uniform over across the bay. So, yeah, hurry up and wait. OK, Lisa, well, keep us posted. And you can see the flags behind us. They're still just flickering. So it is very light and fluky. And um, what about the speed at the moment of Andu Comanche? Or how much breeze have they got? Well, it, well, it looks under five knots mm. or, or even less, Gordon, I think. You can just see him. He's probably doing two to three knots there. And, you know, the question would be whether they keep that massive headsail up. I mean, it gets to a time where the sail becomes a drag rather than a, a pushing force. And maybe they could go to a smaller, lighter headsail. I don't know. They've got another headsail rig there ready on the bow. You can see it lying there. All their headsails are on furler, so they furl them all up. They don't pull them up the conventional way and hanked on or in a foil. They, they, everything is foiled up. But boy, this is light here. This is a rare moment where you see the majority of the Andrew <laughs> Comanche crew yeah. forward of the of the mast. If you count yeah. them all up there, there's probably about 16 or 17 yeah. of them. You can see the big, those massive centre boards are both up in the air uh, to reduce the drag. And look at that bow wave. It's, it's minimal, isn't it? It's hardly any bow wave at all. And... Uh, it's quiet as wow. quiet as anything here. Yeah, this is this is agonising for Andu Comanche <laughs> being so close to the finish, and watching their arch rival Law Connect but, but what ever so, so slowly close the gap. What often happens in this race, and it's happened probably for 78 years, Gordon, that this river has robbed a lot of boats of chances, both on line honours and handicap. More so on handicap. Um, it, it really plays tricks. There's Justin Schaefer there on the left with his computer screens. Sevi Jarvin on the right. Uh, it's not much to look at because there's... And Lisa... Well, they'll be looking at Law Connect, that's for sure. Lisa, apparently Law Connect has picked up a little bit of um, isolated breeze. Yeah, so I was saying couldn't see anything. Now I can. Um, so right near John Garrow's um, lighthouse, there's a, 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 a real slimmer of... Of pressure and Law Connect is in it. That's the only only place that there's ripples on the water right now. So they are in that. They've halved the distance again. And with Andu there behind me, their sails have gone completely floppy. Um, there's it's just sh like I'm. It's just flopping back and forth. So they've got absolutely nothing. You can see Law Connect is just closing that distance, and they are actually going to carry it. They probably have it for another 200 meters, but I think depth is going to be their their issue. It is it's actually going to come really close here. I they're closing the distance. They're going what triple the speed. It's not fast, but it's definitely triple the speed. And do have also they put their bow up, so they're trying to hook into that pressure. So they're not sailing directly to the finish now. They're trying to put their bow up and and get into that pressure that Law Connect has been put into. So let's just have a sneak peek at, at Andu. Um, through here, you can you might be able to see that code zero that's just fully flapping. And the mainsail as well, the, the luff of the mainsail is kind of coming to windward a little bit. Um, a little bit of heel at the moment. And um, a lot, lots of hands on the front of the bow telling the spectator boats to get out of the way. But, you know, there's a couple of hundred metres in this now. Here you can see uh, Rest Point Casino. 
um, off to the left-hand side and still spotting. Gee, gee, this is tense, Gordon. It really is. If we have a look at the live tracker, perhaps, we could go to the live tracker, which is uh, not delayed at all. You can see they're almost neck and neck, but there's rest point. Um, there it is. So that's Law Connect making big inroads up here. And uh, they're going in towards Sandy Bay, where rest point is. And uh, there might be a few dices rolled on the boats and on the casino too, Gordon, here. Yeah. It's, it's very close, very close. But we'll have a look at the situation on the river. So there's Law yep. Connect sneaking along the shore. Let's have a look it up. Much closer to the shore and, and finding a little bit of breeze there, a little bit more breeze than Andrew Comanche at the moment. And they're just uh, coming off uh, Sandy Bay. And Sandy Bay Sailing Club is celebrating its 75th anniversary this year, uh, next year. Yeah, she's got pressure. She has got pressure. Oh, look at this. Look at this. This is this amazing. Is, this is amazing. As you say, Gordon, this is unbelievable. Look at Law Connect. There's a puff of breeze coming to her. Wow. Law Connect is sneaking along the shore there. This is not over by a long shot. This is not over. They've got Law Connect rumbling. This is Shades of the America's Cup in 1983, Peter. This is a, now a dead set match race with Law Connect in pressure. Well, it's, a, a, it's find the wind. Look at this. She's got pressure. Wow, wouldn't Christian Beck be <laughs> nervous? Huge drama, a saloon passage on this western well, shore for Law Connect, and they could easily sail through Andrew Comanche here. I don't know whether it's a saloon passage. There'd be a lot of nerves. Oh, look at this. Not over yet. This is not over by a long shot. Andrew Comanche just struggling to get a bit of way up. Oh, this is going to be bow to bow here in a minute. Now Law Connect has stopped stalled. a little. Yep. Yeah. There's not much breeze where she's going. These two 30-tonne-plus boats <laughs> trying to be little lightweight boats at the moment. Law Connect's going to come out and have another go at her here. She's jibing to come out. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Has she got a man up the rig? I'm not sure. She probably has. That looks very light in there. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's the finishing line that we can... Getting closer and closer, but... Just see that, oh... It's still this, a few miles off the finishing yeah, line. Yeah, this is yeah. a glass out here, absolute glass out. They've, they've just hit the wall. Yeah, so Law Connect is still behind, and now um, Andrew Comanche is is covering her from in the front. It's, it's, uh, it says there's breeze coming down here to Law Connect. She's rumbling. But what's got to happen here is Andrew Comanche, if you're going upwind, it's easy to cover because you're in front of the wind, but... If you're in front and going downwind, it's a, it's a harder game to play to cover, but that's what she's doing. She's got to go where Law Connect goes to cover her. She can't let her split. That's the only hope for Law Connect, really, is to split away and get some better wind. But here's Law Connect. She's got a much better bow wave. So they'd be using that canting curl, as I was saying before, to tip the boat over a little bit. So although it looks well heeled, it's not the wind that's necessarily doing that. It's the keel. It's not fully out to windward, it's, it's, it's in the centre, or just a little bit out to windward. That's the difference there. So it's very close, but still Law Connect is behind. Andrew Comanche still leads. It's Look. narrow, as you can see. Without stating the obvious, it's very close. And very Law, close. And Law Connect sailing into a little bit of uh, a wind puff here. And still closing the gap. Sometimes, I hate to say this, Gordon, it's better to lose by... Two hours and by two seconds, if you know what I mean. That's whoever's going to win or lose this race. It's, uh, if you lose it by a little bit, it's it's as hard to, to take. If you if you lose by three hours, you can understand that you're never going to win it. But to lose by a few minutes, which is going to happen by one of these boats. Well, it might even be seconds, Peter. We well, surmised about the seven second margin yeah. you know, back in 1982, and this could be <coughs> seconds here. You can see that. Oh, here goes, here goes Chris Nicholson and Tony Mutter. They're throwing another jibe in. Wow, they're throwing everything at this, these boys. Tasman Bridge in the background. Yeah. Still a few miles to the finish. 
Now, the thing is, Gordon, we remember at the heads at the start two days ago when that furling line broke, Law Connect had to do a... She did a 360 turn to try and sort their problems out. Would that What's 360 have <laughs> come back to count here at the finish? Oh, I'd hate to say it, but who knows? But anyway, uh, Andu Comanche's looking good now. She's got a bit of heel with the keel and breeze, and so is Law Connect. Just hope these spectator craft don't get in the way and just Law Connects looks slow. Andu Comanche's got the bow up now, which means they're trying to get up into more pressure, build speed, then you can drop the bow down. And you're just looking out behind us, Gordon. What do you see? Much wind? Not much. Not, not much, much at, at all. all. No. Okay, Law Connects got the bow down and pointing at more at Andu Comanche. She looks to have good speed when there. Yeah, she's pointing towards Battery uh, Point at the moment. Yep. Sandy Bay Battery Point. So they're around the Garrow and uh, just can't see who's at the, at the helm there. I, I th would assume Nico, Chris Nicholson or Tony is at the helm. But just can't quite home in on them there, but it's very light. Oh, look at this. This is getting closer. Gee. You're trying to get the bow across in front of Andrew. Andrew's trying to come up to build speed. Oh, boy, dead heat. And Andrew We're going to have a dead heat here. Pretty well stalled. Maybe a tiebreaker, Gordon. Yes. Huh? <laughs> the tiebreaker. <laughs> well, let's do it again. Seconds in it. Lisa. Enthralling. Come so in, Lisa. Law yeah. Connect has been throwing a few manoeuvres in here, and I think that's actually quite a clever move by that team. They seem to be accelerating out of the jibes a lot quicker than Andu Comanche, and so I don't think Andu have a lot of options here. I think they're going to get rolled, and Law Connect's going to throw a few more manoeuvres in here. So, you know, really, really tough, Andu. There's not much they could do. This always happens um, in the lighter breeze. The boat behind does have that opportunity, and yet there's nothing they can really do here. And that was, you know, really aggressive um, moves by Law Connect. So, yeah, this is the role. This is where they're overtaking Andu right near the finish line. This is it right here, the oh. turning point of the race. Law Connect looks as though they're going to cross Andu Comanche. Yep, she's moving. She's got the, see the bow wave coming off Law Connect, but it's... And Andrew's just got nothing. So what is Breeze? Oh, no, I thought it was a Breeze coming towards Law Connect. It's not. She's still a fair way from the finish here, Gordon, isn't she? She's, what, a mile or so to the finish? Yeah, certainly. Uh, I'd say a couple of miles yeah. yet. Well, eight, the bells are peeling for 8 o'clock here in Hobart Town. And, boy, have we got some drama on our hands here. What a finish this is going to be for this race. You can just see the green Rolex flag on the runner of Andu Comanche. He's hardly moving, but it's Law Connect has got a bow in front. Just off Sandy Bay. It's been a, a, an amazing turnaround here over these last 10 or 11 miles. People have often said watching yacht racing is like watching grass grow. Boy, this is not watching grass grow. Let me tell you, this is very exciting. Now Andrew Comanche's that the headsail's just starting to fill. Look at Law Connect, her headsail's just collapsed. Just collapsed, that massive headsail. She's coming back here, Andrew. Yeah, Andrew. Yeah, Andrew's got the got a little bit of pressure. She's rumbling. Law Connect is not. Yep, Andrew's got it. Are they looking the pointing, are they gonna do another maneuver here? wouldn't think so. I think they've got to go in with Law Connect, actually, and try they and keep the pin They could easily regain there. the lead here. Yeah, they, look, they've, they've picked up pressure. That's what it's all about. It's just the wind now. Nothing more. It's all about the wind, or lack of it. Now, Andrew's back in front. They put the, both put the bows up, and that, that's, that's a gain to Andrew Comanche there. Lisa oh. made the, uh, the oh. observation that uh, coming out of the tax, Law Connect seems to accelerate a little more than yeah, Andrew they, Comanche. They, they jibe more aggressively. That's what they've been doing, but there's not much wind to jibe in he, here. Down the shore they go. But it's Andrew is moving a little better than Andrew. Oh no, now, now Law Connect's got the bow down. This is cat and mouse stuff here. Real cat and mouse stuff. Is she gonna jibe? Law Connect's jibing. Gonna have a go at it. 
Well, Chris Lewis. Oh, they're going to they're going to jive in tandem here too. Okay. Yep. This is match racing now. Yep. Game on. Chris Lewis said it's been cat and mouse all the way yep. between these two. What a titanic struggle it's been. So Andrew's still in front. Still in front. But narrowly. But these manoeuvres hurt these big boats so much. But they've got to throw everything at it now, Law Connect. I think that's Chris Nicholson steering, or is it Tony? No, Tony Mutter, I think, in the white shirt. Oh, boy. Yeah, a little bit more boat speed for Andrew oh, at the moment. There's going to be highs and lows here. The light on the winning crew, disappointment on the the losing crew, no doubt about that, but gee. The margin is going to be seconds. Um, is that rest point? That's rest point. Oh, so they've got a, still got a fair way yeah, to go. Yeah, they've still got a few miles to go. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I thought they were closer than they were. They're going parallel to the yeah. finishing line. Yeah, they the are. They're at right yeah. angles. That, and in the background there is the uh, the Derwent Sailing Squadron, which is the home club for Alive, who's leading on handicap at the moment. And also next door to the Derwent Sailing Squadron is the Royal Yacht Club of Tasmania, which is the finishing partner for the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia. And they do such a magnificent job here in Hobart. Uh, the logistics of getting all of these boats into their berths. And then you've got a couple of other races happening too, Peter, the Melbourne Hobart and the Launceston Hobart. But the crowds are really building here at King's Pier. Well, that's looking down towards the finishing line. Well, that's the finishing boy out there. I think you can see that triangular boy. And what we're seeing, little to no wind. There's just a bit of breeze drifting in those flags, drifting down to the course. But at the finishing line, there's nothing. We still can't see them from our... Um, studio here. The finishing line is just around uh, yep. the bow of that big ship there, which is the CSIRO vessel. Uh, that's the headquarters for the CSIRO RP Investigator. It's recently been up in Sydney. And uh, Law Connect is looking for more wind. Peter Shipway, there's a man up the mast on Law Connect. Yeah, well, he's performing two functions, really, to look for the wind and also to kick the battens through of the mainsail when they jive in these light winds. The sail's got battens to, to keep the shape in the sail, but in these light winds, they're hard to get through from one side to the other, so often you see them kicking the battens through to get the shape into the sail soon after they jive. But... Um, the guy perched aloft. And interestingly, Gordon, on the stern of Law Connect, there's a red flag. Hmm, interesting. Now that normally means a protest. So uh, that is a very interesting uh, flag there. But I mean, it, nothing that we've seen obviously in the river has occurred because they've been so far apart until now. And just Law Connect just got a little bit of pressure, so has Andu Comanche. And now it's attack time. What's Law Connect going to do? They're trying to put the bow down, but there's the protest flag. And whether it was an incident in the harbour, I, I don't know. But anyway. You've got Chris Nicholson uh, calling the shots here on Law Connect, a celebrated international sailor. He was sailing his 49er in the Sydney 2000 Olympics on Sydney Harbour. Uh, he won four races in that regatta, mm. but missed out on a medal. Yeah. But uh, one of the most famous um, small boat sailors yeah. now uh, calling the tactics Yeah, here. one of the real good guys too, Nico. There they go, jibe for jibe. Andrew will go with them. See the aggressive jibe that Tony Mudd is putting in on Law Connect. They really swing that boat through. Keels over to give the heel to get the sails set as quick as they can. How but, did that set look to you, Peter? Well, that looked pretty good to me, but... Yeah. And they're accelerating out of the, out of that attack as well. You can see how Andrew Comanche is a little that, bit slow to yeah, accelerate. Yeah, you can just see that that, that manoeuvre looked better on Law Connect. Um, she's trying to roll down across the front of her. That's what the tactics that Nicholson's trying to apply here. Try and take her wind. It's quite, this is this is amazing, isn't it? This is absolutely amazing. It takes us back to 1982 when Apollo and Condor Bermuda were were fighting it out. 
It's, uh, it's absolutely unbelievable how close this is. Look at this. Lorcan X got the bow down. Here we go. And that last jive, they seem to accelerate out of it, Lisa. This is going to be very close. Yeah, that was an amazing... That was an amazing drive by Law Connect. They, like, it didn't look like they were going to go, and then they really threw it around. So Andrew right now trying to put their bow up and, and get clear of that gas. But, yeah, th this, could, this could be the, the race moment. Um, the other done. thing I just spotted is the red flags flying off the back of Law Connect, that protest flag. Not sure what that, that is. And the difference between the boats as well is, is obviously the manoeuvres are better on Law Connect. Um, they don't have somebody up the mast, which I heard them on the comms talking about, so I'm not sure how they feel about that. But, yeah, it's, um, there's this big cloud sitting up above us, and I think that's just really, the wind is really dropping out of there. So it's super erratic out here, and, you know, obviously Law Connect is now in the controlling position, but when they jive back, if, if Andu Comanche can execute that jive really quickly, they could then gas them and we could see another change. But, yeah, Law Connect really just extended there. Um, but yeah, we so I just heard, I think it's the comms coming off Law Connect, and that is that Andrew's in a little bit more pressure. So it really is cat and mouse. They went cat and mouse all the way down the coast, and now cat and mouse all the way up the Derwent River. So, I mean, it'd be pretty stressful on those boats right now, but uh, great to be a sailing fan and, and tuning in and watching this action. It's, it's incredible. They're, they're really running up the back of them now. Um, and, and, and this next jibe is going to be really tough. So Law, Law Connect going really hard bow up right now, building pace. Um, before they're probably going to have to d do another jibe here soon, but um, just trying to hurt and do as much as they can. But yeah, this is this is absolutely insane. I'm, oh. I'm enjoying every minute of it, and uh, heart, heart's in my throat. I can't imagine what they're feeling like uh, on those boats right now. Well, this is just crazy, isn't it? To see these two 100 footers absolutely locked together within spitting distance and, and at going, the end no, of 628 uh, miles. And hardly going anywhere, but andrew has got. Law Connect locked out at that last picture, but she seems to be got a bit more speed up. And whether um, they can get the bow down across the front of Lo uh, Andrew Comanche, and that's what he's trying to do, he's trying to get this bow down so that Looks Andrew so can't lock, it. lock him out. If he was locked out before, he couldn't jive before, but now, now he's got a bit more pressure. Law Connect, yeah, he's got. So whether see if they're both on port jibe, which means the breeze, the non yacht is coming from the left hand side of the port side of the yacht. So when they jibe, they'll go on to starboard, and, and Law Connect will have right away. Andrew's putting the bow up now to try and get up on the gas of Law Connect, but Law Connect extended there, so he will be in the stronger position here. Law Connect. Now what's Andrew? Andrew's going to jibe. By, think. Oh, Law Connects collapsed. And oh, they're jibing too. Okay. Yeah, Law Connects jibed. Andu has jibed. They're both jibed. There's Rest Point Casino. Right on the bow of Law Connect. And literally, what, a mile and a half, two miles now from the finishing line on the water. We're just getting reports behind us, Gord. There's no wind at all. <laughs> That's obvious. <laughs> Stating the obvious here, but look at this. After all, 628 miles in a straight line, this is what we were left with. Andrew's got a little bit of pressure. So it'll all be about the approach to the finishing line now. Can Law Connect lock Andrew Comanche out or vice versa? Andrew Andrew's more got pressure a good pressure, again. yep, yep, yep. So Andrew probably slipping back into the lead. The lead has well, changed hands well, two or three got, times here in the river. He's got to come back on port tack, which is a disadvantage because Law Connect's on starboard or has the right of way. What Andrew's got to try and do is get down in front of Law Connect. Would they be laying, laying the finish? I doubt it. But there's more breeze looks to be coming to Andrew, and she's going to get it first. She so being the windward boat, she's get the pressure. She will get the pressure first. Just see her picking up speed now. Law Connect won't be liking what she's seeing here. Because Andrew could almost be on the gas of Law Connect here, meaning that she's taking the wind away from her. And these light airs, it's very critical. It's critical at best of times, but it's doubly so in these light airs. Now, Law Connect's doing okay. 
Hetzel's four, but Andu Kamachi's faster at the moment. So Lorcan X controlling at the moment if, if they keep the same speed up because when Andu Kamachi comes back, she can't, won't go across the bow of Law Connect. She'll have to go behind her because of the starboard attack rights on Law Connect. But what Law, uh, Andu Kamachi's got to try and do is get a faster down in front of Law Connect so she can jive across on Port Tack. Tony Mutter and, and Chris Nicholson try and lock her out, meaning she can't jive and go in front of them. She'll have to go behind them. Oh, boy. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be a tactician for anything here, Gordon, would you? It's well, I think you, you've got to say Law Connect maybe is in the, uh, in, in the pole position at the moment. But there's still a long way to go. I mean, we've still got how far to go? We've got a mile or so to go. So what Andrew is just trying to put the bow up to gain a bit more speed. Once you get the bow up, there's the finishing line we're looking at. Crowds are gathering. See that little box yep, there? That's, the little that's white the finishing box. box. That's the finishing yep. line. Yep. So literally, uh, probably a mile or so yep, to the that, finish that at the most. Be. Oh, OK. Here's, here's an attack. Here's an attack from Law Connect. She's gone across the stern. Oh, wow. She's trying to take the air of, of Andu Comanche. Advantage Andu Comanche here for sure. Wow, that was a quite a desperate move from Law Connect. But Andrew Comanche was taking her air. A little bit more breeze now at Kingspear yeah, as well. Yeah, I think so Andrew advantage here. That may have been the moment. Yep. She was getting rolled by Andrew Comanche. I think that's what they had to do. Oh boy, this is going to be a strong advantage Andrew Comanche now. They could be laying the finishing line. So both yachts could be laying the finishing line here and less than a mile to go. Andrew Comanche, after all of that nerve wracking, toing and froing, the squeeze back. Yep, Law Connect looks slower. Andrew's bow down a little here. Almost eight o'clock here in Hobart. Eastern Australian summertime. This race drawing to a unbelievable conclusion. I think they've got one more jibe and in. I can't. I think they've got to come in and jibe to get down to the finishing line. Good pressure now on, on uh, Law Connect, Connect, but Andrew coming up to match up. He can lock her out now. Andrew can lock. Uh, Law Connect out really. Yeah, I think they're going to run out of runway here. Law Connect. They've kept their nerve on Andrew Comanche. Boy, they were behind a couple of times there coming up the river. There's the Empress Towers there, that uh, small high rise at bat at uh, Battery Point. Now advantage Andrew here. And will this be the the smallest margin in race history? The <laughs> seven seconds was the is the smallest margin. And Boy, full be... marks to both these crews. What a performance from both of them, really, to be so close after all this time. Law Connect is just moving a little bit quicker, but Andrew's got her locked out. Really, she can't jibe there. They'll probably go out to a a lay line and, and come in and that man up the mast on Andrew Comanche uh, uh, worth his weight be in getting gold. a few extra beers <laughs> yes, yes. but Andrew's now coming up does that mean that Law Connect's starting to rumble over at the top of him Andrew's coming up to him just wonder what that protest flag's all about Gordon maybe we'll, a little bit more to hear about that oh here comes Andrew putting the bow up uh, Law Connect reacts. Oh, gee, there's is that the finishing boy down there. Yes, yeah. So advantage here, Andu. Advantage, Andu. There's the finishing boy. So what will happen here? Andu will just keep going um, and probably overlay the finishing line and just reach in 
and Law Connect's got nothing else they can do but just to follow them in. Because Andrew's on star, but she's got all the rights here. A Law Connect can't come back. There's Breeze now, you can just see it. Oh, look at this. So, oh, Law Connect's got the bow down here. Wow, she's taken the breeze of Andrew. That's what's happened. That's what's happened here. Stand by, stand by. This is exciting. They've done it. Law Connect's done it. They've put the bow across in front of Andrew. Oh, Chris Nicholson's calling. Okay. Advantage, it's back to Law Connect. Look at this. I think Law Connect might do this. Wow, advantage Law Connect here. They can now jibe. They'll go to the ley line, I think. And just 100 metres to the finishing line. Oh, look at this. This is amazing. Unbelievable. Okay, here they go. Law Connect's jibing. Here goes Andrew Comanche jibing with them. There's the finishing boy, the yellow boy. They've got to leave that to starboard. Wow. Game on here. Law Connect, can they get the clear air? I think they're going to do this, Gordon. I think they're going to do it. Put the bow up. Haven't got that headsail unfurled yet. On They've got to get the bow down now on Law Connect. They've got to pin them out. They've done a great job. Chris Nicholson, Tony Mutter. Take a bow here, boys. Take a bow. Law Connect, I think, is going to do it, Gordon, and give Christian Beck the line on his victory that he's so been desperate for after a runner-up three times in a row. Here's Law Connect on her way. There's the finishing boy that just got a turn to starboard. Who's at the helm? There's Tony at the helm. They're going to do it. Law Connect's going to win this. Extraordinary scenes here on the Derwent. They've done it. Law Connect over the finishing line, just seconds ahead of Andu Comanche. There it is. One, two, three, four, five. They've done it. Wow. Well done. Look at that. What a thrill. Fantastic. Look at that. Well, that was one Look of the great that. moments in Australian sport. Well, history. it certainly was. One of the great moments in the Sydney Hobart history. What a moment for Christian Beck. As I said earlier, one of the real nice guys. And there's... Oh, dear. Well, they've had their turn last year. And uh, Andrew Comanche now limps over the line. What a performance. You can't take anything away from both these crews, really. Both magnificent efforts, but in the end, someone had to win, and it was Law Connect is the winner. On line honours, we'll get the John Illingworth Trophy, the John Illingworth Cup, named after the winner of the first ever Hobart race on the little boat Rani in 1945, and that will be presented shortly to Christian Beck and his crew. Peter, what? one hour and 20 minutes ago, um, Andrew Comanche had entered the Derwent River and was a good mile ahead. Yeah, And uh, Lisa Dominan said that Law Connect will definitely compress in the very light conditions. Andrew Comanche, heartbreak for them. They appeared to be in the command position just a few hundred metres from the finishing line, but Law Connect found a way through and they have won for Christian Beck after finishing second in the previous three years. Yeah, it's a downtime there on that boat. It's a disappointment all around. I mean... To be so close and then uh, so far at the end. Boy, uh, wow. Well, we haven't seen a finish like that for a long while, Gordon. And oh, daylight hours. Yeah. It, uh, wow, that will bring the spectators back. Talk about watching the grass grow. There's nothing about watching the grass grow there. That was magnificent. Wonderful sailing by, by Law Connect at the end there. I thought they'd thrown it away. But uh, when you're dealing with... a two-time Australian Yachtsman of the Year and round-the-world race winners. Who am I to, to comment? But they, they got the job done. They, they got above Andu. They rolled on top of her, got the bow in front, were able to jive onto port and uh, get across that finishing line as the victors. I wonder what the official margin was. It wasn't much. It'd be no, a I minute think or so. It's it? probably going to be, uh, uh, look, maybe 15 seconds, yeah. something like that. But remember last year, Law Connect finished just 26 and a half minutes behind Andu Comanche when they were able to compress uh, in Storm Bay and, and the Derwent. Look at Tony Mutter, the, the great New Zealander. Well, he's won it before, but never in those circumstances, that's for sure. That uh, some really 
top crew on all on both these boats but these guys Rodney Daniels aboard an old crewmate of mine he sailed with us on love um, love and war on wild oats many times uh, Dylan Clark in the uh, in the sewer of that boat uh, might sound uh, not the right thing to say but the sewer is down below where all the work gets done packing the sails and packing the spinnakers another terrific bloke um, Nico of course Chris Nicholson Brad Jackson another top New Zealander the other interesting thing, Peter, about Law Connect, Christian Beck's the head of a legal software company, Leap, and Law Connect is part of Leap's software. But there are four Corinthian sailors, four amateur sailors, yes, and probably yeah. four first timers well, on board. Be, absolutely, first timers. They only started training three weeks ago. They have the development operations manager, the client mar marketing manager, and the information operating GoPros person who supplies the food and water and the live stream and the sail handling. And um, Christian Beck, the former Entrepreneur of the Year, has absolutely nailed it here in a gripping finish, nail-biting at the end of 628 nautical miles over the four-time Line Honours winner, Andrew Comanche. And I think it's worth mentioning some of the, the well, all the crew will get mentioned with their presentation a bit later, but Ty Oxley, the boat captain, he's prepared this boat for many years for Christian Beck and you know, immaculately prepared, and the, the uh, he'd be very thrilled. Charlie White, uh, Nico, Dylan Clark, as I mentioned, Ellen Howard, Lucas Chapman, Mitch White, Alexander Goff, uh, Brad Jackson, a top New Zealander, Scott Beavis, Mitch uh, White, I mentioned him, Mustafa Ingram, Paul Kimber, Rodney Daniels, Ryan Phillips, uh, a couple of guys I don't know, Simbad, Simbad Gurog, I don't know Simbad, Simbad the sailor. Um, Wani Yap and Yihan Gutan. I think they are members of Christian Beck's company. He gives them, yes. they draw out of a hat for four of them to go to Hobart. Well, what a thrill for those guys. Um, Carlos Hernandez, Charlie White, I mentioned before. And uh, boy, can they sit back, soak this up, because that is a once in a lifetime experience. I can tell you that. You might never, ever get that opportunity again. You may get it again. But take it now it's it's just one of those great victories um in australian sport to get line honors in the sydney hobart race not many have done it only 78 times it's been done of course but uh, a couple of times some boats have won it more than once so it's a it's rare atmosphere that these people are in now and these boats are in and peter representing the greenwich flying squadron yes <laughs> on the northern foreshores of sydney I don't know whether you've been to the Greenwich I Flying have, Squadron. I have. I sail um, skiffs there. Yeah, it's a, it's a very modest little structure, and they're all volunteers, and um, they will be absolutely over the moon. Well, of course, uh, they've got a long way to go now. They've got Wild Oats, nine line honours. I don't know whether Christian will come back for another go at it uh, to try and break that record. And the great Currower Four, that, or Mourner that became Currower Four, had seven wins. But today, it, it's all about Law, law Connect. Lisa, you've given us some dramatic coverage out there on the water, but your feelings after that um, unbelievable finish? Oh, that was an amazing finish. And I think we had three or four lead changes, you know, just in the last, I don't know, a couple of minutes of the race. And I mean, what a race it was. Law Connect, they were, had their back against the wall and they, they found something. I said there wasn't a lot of opportunity, but they definitely found it. I think the clouds played a massive part in that. And I think, you know, that, that whole changing of, of who was in front, Law Connect, had to be really aggressive to make something happen, and they did. So hats off to them, that was amazing. And, you know, it's co quite incredible to see when you see, you know, utter elation and utter devastation within 15 seconds of each other. So, I mean, Andrew sailed at an amazing race, um, but, yeah, Law Connect really brought it to them. And, you know, after a couple of seconds, the, the feeling to finally win, I, I can only imagine the feelings on board. But considering they just got line on the Cecilia Hobart, they're not jumping around, they're really um, doing their business getting their sails down looking after the asset and i'm sure the celebrations will hit when they get to the dock but i mean if this is anything to go by i think this afternoon with uh, the mini maxis coming in it's going to be pretty exciting too the other point peter is that law connect um, is the clubhouse leader on handicap uh, at the moment until these uh, mini maxis come in but um, yeah they're, they're certainly in the box seat particularly if the wind dies yes they are gordon at the moment um but look at least it's all very quiet on board i look i think that they'd be in shock I think really they'd be in shock I mean two hours ago they were two miles behind and probably 
not many passing opportunities and uh, now they've won by a minute or so or less and uh, our hearts were racing yeah, yeah. Uh, it was just a I hope everyone enjoyed it I mean yeah. we got pretty yeah. excited here you can imagine what the crews were like and uh, as I said earlier, disappointment yeah. for Andrew Comanche. No doubt about that. Yeah. To be so close and to lose by such a narrow margin, it's it's worse if you lost. It's, 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 losing by a little bit mm. is worse if you lose by a, a big bit. I mean, you know, I, don't, I hope I make sense there. Yeah. But, but just losing by that little bit um, is so disappointing. But, well, you know, uh, Christian Beck, well, three times he's been runner-up and now he's he's got the bickies, I think... Uh, Everyone will be thrilled with that result. Well, he said the uh, disappointment when he won the Solus Big Boat yes. Challenge on Sydney Harbour, he said, this is the greatest thrill of my life. Yes. That was just a, a few weeks ago, winning around the harbour, a sprint around the harbour. Now he's won the Rolex Sydney Hobart, Christian Beck. Take a bow. Yeah, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, I'm sh- I hope he comes back with this boat. I mean, it's showed what it can do in the short harbour race, which really is nothing much about a Sydney Hobart race, just a sprint, 100 metre sprint compared to a marathon, but uh, he's worked hard to get this boat right and he's worked hard to put a good crew together and he's de- they've delivered the goods today for him. But let's let's talk about Andrew Comanche. I think uh, they've been impeccable since the boat has arrived here under John Winning Jr. They won the Hobart last year and they won a, a heap of races um, while the boat's been here with a very good crew. Sure, disappointment today, but I think they've got to be congratulated on firstly bringing this boat to Australia, um, giving so many people um, an opportunity to sail. They're out most Wednesday afternoons sailing, and anyone's been invited to sail on this boat. They've been very generous, the winning family, to let people sail on this boat. Um, anyone who's anyone. Don't have to be a sailor. You could just put your hand up and go for a sail. So they've really introduced a lot of people to, uh, to the joys of big boat sailing on Sydney Harbour. And I know friends of mine, including my daughter, have been out on the boat and they've just absolutely loved it. They've been very hospitable, the winning family. And now it's probably over for them on Andrew Comanche. There'll be bigger thing, things in store, I'm sure. But I think we've got to pay full congratulations and credit to, to um, Herman Winning for bringing this boat out and having such a wonderful campaign. It didn't deliver today for him, unfortunately, but I think he can be proud of what he's done with this boat and uh, what he's done for the sport here in Australia. But uh, today does not belong to him. It belongs to Law Connect. Very well chosen words, uh, Peter Shipway. Yes, and, and Andrew Comanche, up until today, has won every major ocean race this year. On the, on the eastern seaboard and uh, right at the death. It's very last race for John Winning Jr. Um, it's been pipped on the post, literally, <laughs> by Law Connect. And, and, and what a splendid showcase for this southern city of Hobart in Tasmania, which has turned on beautiful weather as well. OK, Gordon, you said that the margin was seven seconds between Apollo and... Uh Condor Bermuda, the margin this morning was 11 seconds. There you go. Well, I thought it was you know, 12 or 15 seconds, so, yeah. Amazing. Now, what's hanging there? So the, the situation here is that the, the crews will now uh, pack up get the boats in order and then they will come into the track is showing that Andrew Comanche has won I hope we haven't surely that's not right I hope that's not well well, I'm saying hope that's not right I'm sure unless well Lisa was there on the spot and she confirmed uh, that Law Connect had won but uh, if we go there's the tracker and uh, it is showing that Andrew Comanche has won. Well, they weren't uh, jumping around as though they'd won, that's for sure. Yeah. We might get... Lisa, uh, are you with us? Yeah. Um, we're just I looking at... You. We're looking at the tracker here and it's saying that Andrew Comanche has beaten Law Connect, but um, have we been looking at the well, wrong I'm picture? <laughs> No, I mean, I definitely look like uh, Law Connect definitely crossed that line first um, and Comanche just drifted across them and by the... 
by the looks on um, the boats as well, they thought the same. So I'm not sure w where the trackers were sitting. But perhaps the mark trackers were in the wrong position. But, yeah, uh, Law Connect, I can 100% say, cross, cross the line first. OK, well, you've crossed the line first many times as an Olympian, so we'll, we'll take your word as gospel. And Peter Shipway and I are feeling a little bit more relieved because that sort of hit us between the eyes when we saw Andrew Comanche having won the race by 11 seconds over Law Connect. But... Um, what are your emotions, Lisa, at the moment, just watching the two crews and experiencing your first Rolex Sydney yeah, Hobart? Yeah, I mean, it's so... I mean, it's amazing. I think what's kind of tough is obviously Andu leading in uh, to the Derwent. Derwent, I mean, they had such tough breeds to deal with. And with that, you've got to deal with the conditions that you've got. And um, un unfortunately, timing was everything for them because right now the breeze is filled in. So if they had rounded, you know, an hour later, they would have had clear breeze and probably sailed away with it. But, you know, that's sailing. We, we, don't, we don't get to control the weather. You've got to deal with what you've got. And, and I mean, Law Connect coming second several times in a row. Um, we can pop over over here and see the two boats having having a bit of a chat and, and and congratulating each other but you know i mean i came second at the olympics and and that sucks so for law connect to have come second a couple of times and finally get that win I, i'm really really stoked for them but you know and do also finishing their campaign here in australia it would have been a nice fairy tale finish for them but you know there's only got to be one winner and unfortunately uh, that sport and uh, they, they'll be gutted on and do and they'll be stoked on law connect but um everyone just has to be proud of their performance and, and you know, it might have come down to one decision in the end of whether you, you chase them up or, or you point and shoot at the finish. And unfortunately, the way that the weather worked and the clouds were dropping wind out of the sky was pretty hard to predict and you flipped the coin and Law Connect got it right this time. So, um, yeah, hats off to them. Amazing campaign. They've always been there and they've always been pushing and it just goes to show you've got to push to the, to the last moment. So hundreds of metres behind, a mile behind, doesn't matter. You've got to, you've got to push to the to the last manoeuvre and, and, and get every ounce of speed you can out of the boat and they certainly did that on Law Connect so congratulations to them. Terrific stuff Lisa and thank you for your vibrant coverage but uh, great respect shown by the two crews, uh, Peter Shipway, um, as they uh, came alongside and uh, Tony Mutter and the Law Connect boys and Christian Beck acknowledged the amazing effort by Andrew Comanche. The two of the fastest 100 footers, mono hole 100 footers in the world, these two boats. Yet today they were two of the slowest 100 footers coming up the Derwent River. But um, it has been just an extraordinary finish to the race. All look lost, even uh, within a mile of the finish for Law Connect, but somehow they found a way. And that's the great thing about um, this boat, Law Connect. And Tony Mutter has told Peter Shipway and myself. The great thing about Law Connect and their crew is that they sail the boat to 100% of its potential. And Peter, you can't do any more than that. And uh, boy, it was 150% of their potential in those closing stages. Amazing comeback, yeah. It, it, uh, well, the river gave the opportunities and that's what happened. I mean, it, it, uh, if the breeze had stayed in, it would have been all over. Um, uh, with Andrew Comanche having such a commanding lead at the Iron Pot, and uh, but uh, it gave the opportunity to uh, get some passing lanes involved, and that's what happened. We saw it close right up. And they're just lowering the sails now, and uh, there's Law Connect all neat and tidy, and uh, Andrew Comanche still with the mainsail up, and both. Crews will come into the dock here and uh, one will get the champagne and the other will get the flat beer, I guess. That's <laughs> the way it is. And there's the Royal Yacht Club of Tasmania tender. Every boat that arrives here in Hobart will be escorted by the RYCT officials. They're all volunteers. and That's the, the great thing about this race. And they will come into uh, Kings Pier right beside our television studio and... Peter G will be stepping here uh, very shortly um, as I'll be moving to the stage for the presentation of the uh, medallions. But Peter, as you say, there was a, a protest flag um, off the um, stern of Law Connect. But, yeah. um, but I think the fact that they've finished first across the line uh, confirms that situation for them. So there will be a presentation on the stage. and. Uh, the Premier of Tasmania, the Honourable Jeremy Rockliffe, will be saying a few words 
of congratulations. Yes, it's always a, a great occasion. Um, I've been fortunate enough to participate in that a, a few times and it's, uh, it's a, a great occasion for the people of Hobart. With Wild Oats 11 too. Yeah, and way back on Bumblebee 4 in 1979. Yes. <laughs> Seems a long time ago, doesn't it? But uh, we finished, we were in the river with no one around us, oh, no other boats around us. We won by a couple of hours, but not today. That was, that was exciting. You won't get a more exciting finish than that. That was unbelievable. Well, we've been on tender hooks during the night. I don't think we got much sleep, Peter. Um, well, I kept we, looking at the tracker every five kept minutes. Kept looking at the tracker <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and the breeze and, and the speed of the, the two yachts, but it certainly looked like Andrew Comanche uh, had things in hand. But Law Connect, well, they just would not lie down. They were like a blue heel, weren't they, right throughout the race. OK, yeah. we're now getting the right, the right time. All right, Look at that. You guess what the, uh, the margin was? Oh, OK, 51 seconds. Okay. 51 seconds 51 to Law seconds. Connect. Yeah. I, think, I think what happened was that once Law Connect got over, yeah. Andrew didn't even bother unfurling the hips. Yes. They knew the game was up. So it, it probably would have been you know, 15 seconds yeah. um, if they had have sailed to the line. But yeah. once they so, were beaten, uh, game so over. Law Connect, the, the uh, clubhouse leader on handicap, so um, now that's the real prize now, the, the IRC prize, the International Rating Council prize, the committee, uh, sorry, the handicap prize. Alive is leading. Yeah, Alive's looking um, in, in reasonable, they've, what, their speed there, Peter, 10.7 knots. And she's got to finish by six o'clock tonight to displace Law Connect. And she's just southeast of Mariah Island, so coming down onto uh, um, Tasman Island. It's, it's all down to Mother Nature now. Well, she's got 86 miles to go and she's got to finish by 6.30 tonight and the time here is 8.30, let's say. So that means, what's that, 10 hours, 86 miles. It's going to be tight. If she's on the breeze, it's going to be tight. Yeah. Um, but I think Advantage Alive at the moment, slightly, uh, Money Penny, Sean Langman, he's he's done very well, and URM also. Sean Langman on Money Penny's got to finish by 7:15 tonight, and URM by 6:43. So URM probably URM slightly favoured because they've only got 84 miles to go, and Alive has got to beat them across the line by about 11 minutes. So it's tight. I, I think probably looking at that, Gordon, at the moment, URM and Alive will probably fight out the handicap prize for the boats that will finish today, I think. And we'll be seeing those boats um, uh, yep. once they get into the river. We'll be covering that live um, with our hype media coverage uh, through the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia. So I'm just uh, having, you won't miss a moment. I'm just having a look while you're talking there, Gordon, at the okay. breeze at Tasman Island, which is yeah. very important to what we're um, talking about for the handicap prize, because all attention now will turn to that. Um, I'm just trying to look at Tasman Island, Gordon, and the well, infamous what, yeah. Tasman Island has Sow Sow West at 15, gusting 19. So they'd be on the wind, those boats, uh, tacking into the breeze. So although they might be doing 10 knots in boat speed, they're not doing 10 knots in a straight line. Yeah. The VMG They've is They've got to get round 10. the corner, haven't they? Well, yeah. if they get round the corner, they'll be yeah, OK, they'll but be they're okay. still uh, 46 miles from Tasman. Yeah. So they've got... So that's where you think URM uh, will be Well, she's got better a slightly served. better handicap. Yeah. Uh, no, she's slightly Slightly worse than yeah. uh, Alive. And she's, she's a 72 and footer. she's two miles ahead. Mm. It'll be interesting. But, but it could be close again. It could yeah. be 11 seconds. Or but URM <laughs> loves a little bit of stuff She likes on to go upwind. She's, yeah. she's good upwind. And, uh, and she's improved her downwind performance as well. So you've got the four Johnson brothers on board. Just remember that they tore a couple of sails yes. on the first night. I think they ripped a working Jib. headsail yep. and a code zero. Lost their code zero. Yeah. Yeah. So if they're code zeroing across Storm Bay, that could hurt them if they don't have that proper sale. So good luck to um, URM, good luck to Alive yeah. and also to Sean Langman in Money Penny. Yeah, well that that would that all any of those three boats would be a popular win, let me say that. All good guys and girls aboard those boats. Um, so we'll see 
how that plays out. Well, we'll be here this afternoon to, to do all that for you, for everyone. And uh, you got to, you're off to meet the Governor, Gordon. Give him my regards, will you? Is it the Governor or the Premier? <laughs> the, the Premier. The Premier, I'll oh, give him my regards. Yeah. I know both of them very yes, well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of course you do, yes. I, I'm sure you've been up yeah. there at Government House. Yes, get my knighthood up there. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah no, it's been, it's been wonderful and uh, um, fabulous television. Um, I'm not hearing anything from, uh, from Dave Flower. Are we, are we keep going? Yeah, we'll just keep going and we'll, we'll watch as the, the big 100-footers come in. Um, no, the Governor is um, uh, out of town at the moment, I think, Peter. Uh, right. Yeah. But uh, the Premier will be here and also the Lord Mayor. And, uh, well, there's going to be some wild scenes, I think, for Law Connect. Well, I hope um, Christian very Beck's, popular I hope Christian Beck's got some deep pockets <laughs> because he'll, he'll have to shout a lot of people. <laughs> and I think... Uh, well deserved indeed and there's Law Connect just waiting to come in and get their medals and uh... okay um, this uh, live coverage will continue very shortly um, we're just going to take a, a short break so don't leave us for long and we'll be watching the the 100 footers come in and uh, Peter G will be stepping into the hosting position alongside the, the voice of Australian sailing, Peter Shipway. Great commentary again, Peter. Uh, really um, was fascinating watching that uh, tooth and nail struggle up the Derwent River and uh, you just covered it so beautifully. So um, well done to Law Connect and um, I'll, I'll, I'll speak I'll speak to Government House about your knighthood, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll sign off, eh? I think that's yeah, it well, for the time we're, being. And we're back exhausted. very shortly. We're exhausted, but back congratulations to Law Connect. Yeah. And take nothing away from Andrew Comanche, a brilliant performance, but just by 50-odd seconds, not quite good enough this time. Yep. OK, we'll be back very shortly with Peter G and Peter Shipway.
Peter G now in this, <laughs> the studio with Peter Shipway. Pete, that was as an exciting uh, a yacht race as I've ever seen and one of the most exciting sporting events I've ever been up close to. I was out on the water. Could you feel the excitement in here in the studio Unbelievable, as well? Pete. Yeah. I'd have to go back and look at it again. I'm just enthralled by it all. I can hardly remember what happened. But boy, it was exciting as we were just watching behind us, Law Connect coming in and... Uh, 50, what did I say, 51 seconds, I think, was the margin. Yeah, I, out on the water, yeah. I made it about 50 seconds. Yeah. It could have been closer, but yeah. uh, both of them uh, filled up their hitzels before they got to the line. Yeah, really. well, I think yeah. Andrew Comanche did. They realised the game was yeah. over. But as we said earlier, for Christian Beck, um, he's tried for so often, so long, and been not quite there for the last three years. And, uh, well, that's all been vindicated now as this world-class crew dock the boat and uh, we'll go live shortly to the presentation of the medals and uh, hear from the boys and uh, what, a, what a thrill. And on a beautiful morning, the sea breeze is now in. Yeah, it's, it's well, in. you know, so often it's said that the River Derwent and things shut down <laughs> yeah. uh, but and turn off. But today, I think the River Derwent turned it on. They were just perfect conditions for that match racing jibing jewels yes, yeah. probably about six jibes between the john garrow light and the finish line yeah. in the last two miles one covering the other depending on who was leading and i'd say the lead changed three or four times in that uh last uh yeah. leg up the river a couple of times i gave it to andrew comanche a couple of times i gave it to law connect but where it mattered that finishing line that's the only one you want to be in front at so we might have a look at the replay, well, I think. Well, I mean, and have a look for a catamaran that has to reverse out of this duel right on the, uh, the northernmost buoy of the finish line. I know police have taken details of this boat that just happened to be in the, the wrong place and may have stymied Andu Comanche somewhat. But this is Law Connect that has the advantage here as they're approaching the line. And... We don't know what the uh, protest flag is about, but that's a moot point now because uh, Law Connect, after being bridesmaid for three years in a row, have taken line honours and have they gone quick enough to actually win on handicap? Well, it's a distinct possibility, absolutely. Absolutely it is. They're the clubhouse leader now who have the two boats that are finished, but... Uh, a lot to play out uh, north of Tasman Island at the moment. Um, yeah, those so maxi chasers are alive, I think, might be back in the handicap lead, the Tasmanian entry. But let's concentrate on line honours here at the moment. And wow, a lot of these sailors will have been on board for the the, the close but no cigar last three races yes, in the yeah. Rolex Sydney Hobart. And now, as they fire up the <laughs> motor, uh, get... The uh, sails sorted, but hugs first. And, uh, well, Christian Beck, what a delighted man. I think he only his second race this year on board, the uh, um, this Super Maxi. And they've made modifications. And, Peter, I wonder if it made uh, a difference uh, that was to help them downwind. And uh, just up the river, they seem to, though, get the... The pressure first uh, while I was out yeah, there, well, just uh, south uh, of the Garrow, they they got in a bit of fresh breeze, and uh, that's when the pressure really came on uh, Andrew Comanche. Well, the breeze followed them up the river. You know, um, obviously Andrew Comanche was in front, but she stubbed her toe a couple of times yeah, because she got that's too a far. Great, great description. Yeah. Too far ahead of the wind and just stopped. Gave Law Connect the opportunity to come closer. Stopped again. Law Connect got closer, and then. Just got right on top of her um, a couple of times. Andrew Comanche, I thought she had the job done. Certainly right at the finish, I thought she had the job done. But then Chris Nicholson pulled out a real rabbit out of the hat and went above Andrew Comanche. And I thought that Andrew Comanche could lock him out and prevent him from jiving. But they got into the, the dirty air of Andrew Comanche, rolled over the top of her, got bow ahead, enabled her to jibe and come into the finish line on port jibe, which was gutsy stuff, but, you know, winning stuff. World class stuff, and uh, these big boats, 30 tons plus, to try and move them around. It's uh, you need a lot of wind to do it. We saw today the light winds provided a really good spectacle. It did exactly. You don't need winds to make an exciting no. yacht race, and especially for the, these these big 100 footers, they almost create their own breeze. 
And listen to the crowd. I must say, Peter, they were the favourites out on the water when they took the lead off uh, Nutgrove Beach, or Long Point there near the uh, Sandy Bay Sailing Club. The roar from on board, and there must have been a <laughs> hundred plus spectator craft out there. You could hear it right across uh, the River Derwent. Uh, they were the cement, sentimental favourites. Andrew Comanche has uh, tasted line on success on uh, four occasions. I think the, the feeling out there amongst the, the yachties and the, the casual observers was they wanted Law Connect to do it this year and they did it for them. Yes, well, they'll uh, leave the boat here and uh, go up and Gordon Bray will present the medals along with the, uh, the Premier and it's one of the great institutions of this sport to have the winners congratulated and awarded just after they finish here at uh, Battery Point but uh, still 90 plus boats still at sea we don't we can't <laughs> forget that no and now the race is on for handicap honours and those uh, maxi chases in Storm Bay it could shut down this afternoon or the sea breeze came in early yesterday it hasn't been quite as warm today so it might be a bit later before we see that sea breeze to propel them up the river Derwent to the finish and that's going to be the second exciting moment of the day when does a live get in or URM yeah. well, they're still uh, 40 miles from Tasman I think if I can get to Tasman they'll be in good shape because there'll be breeze across the bay I think they've still got that 40 miles on the on the wind to get to Tasman Island but at the moment, all there's Christian Beck, Commodore Arthur Lane of the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia, presenting the John Illingworth Cup to Christian. He thinks he wants some champagne inside <laughs> the cup. That's Richard Bevan, the Commodore of the Royal Yacht Club of Tasmania, yes, handing yeah. over. Is that a Jeroboam? I'm, yeah, I'm I think not... that's what they're called. I don't drink many of those. <laughs> I think it's three magnums anyway. Yeah, there's in, in between them, Tony Mutter there with the black hat on the white shirt. He was the skipper, started the boat, finished the boat. There's Tony. Arthur's not letting the, uh, the no, cup no, over no, just yet. very serious. Yeah, they should yeah. throw him in the water with the cup. <laughs> there's Tony coming up to... And there's uh, the rest of it. There's Chris Nicholson, Australian Olympian Yachtsman of the Year. Yeah, yeah I think... In past uh, years. The Commodores are getting out of the way because there's going to be uh, yeah, a, bit a, of a shower of champagne very shortly. Flying short around, yes. Well, would they have believed that 24 hours ago? Who knows? Probably not. But you never give up hope here in this great race. <laughs> There'll be a few more of those bottles flying before the afternoon's out, let me tell you. That's Ty Oxley there, the boat captain. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to show Kristen, this is how you do it, mate. Yeah, that was I think there might be a drink coming up very yeah. shortly. And well-deserved too, the owner-skipper... Christian Beck, he's going to down the whole lot himself, I think. Well, you Boys, that tastes good. After three years of flat beer, now he can drink <laughs> the champagne. I think he's well deserved to have that, Pete. And uh, just while we're having a look at uh, talk about the weather, we've got uh, Tasman Island, oh, it's starting to blow. 16 gusting, 24 out there, so from the southwest. So we'll, um, those boats are going to have a, a reasonable passage into uh, Tasman. The following group of URM Alive and Money Penny. We're watching the celebrations aboard Law Connect, the winner and line honours in this year's Rolex Sydney Hobart race by 51 seconds, the second narrowest margin in the history of the race. Yeah, I thought they were going to challenge 1982 and uh, Condor of Bermuda and Apollo, who were separated by just seven seconds. And perhaps... Oh, people in the water. Here we go. <laughs> and perhaps if Andrew Comanche hadn't been stalled there at that final jibe, we didn't see it on the replay, but there was a spectator catamaran that uh, might have stymied them a little bit. Um, but if there are any ill feelings, it's not towards the opposition because Andrew Comanche were the first out there on the water as they were sorting out the, the sail wardrobe on the foredeck to uh, offer three cheers to uh, the victors today, and that was Law Connect. That was returned by the Law Connect crew, so great respect here between these two teams. And Andrew Comanche, Tracy Matthews from the RYCT has just said it's about to be ushered into its pen. 
But yeah, gee, there's yeah. smiles all around as you would expect. There's Chris uh, Lewis there with a white hat just at the back there. He's the navigator, man from San Francisco. He'll be absolutely delighted with this performance. I mean, it's a very tactical race nowadays with the weather information that these navigators are getting. They're such a key part to the, uh, to the success of all of these boats. And, uh, you know, in the old days, you used to read the, the newspaper and on Boxing Day, and that was your weather. But today, it's, uh, it's computers, there's weather modelling, there's weather experts that work at about it uh, for about um, a week out before the race. It was very tricky this year, and I spoke to Chris Lewis on Christmas Day, and he said he still couldn't get a handle on it. Uh, and I said, look, what's your ETA? And he said, oh... Could be two days, ten hours, or it could be a lot less, and it was a lot less. Of one day, nineteen hours, and three minutes and fifty-eight seconds. Um, so these navigators are, are, are so are the such American a key. navigator duel. Yeah, that's right. Well, there's Chris there, the big guy, just kneeling down there with the white hat and the black jacket on. Behind him, Ty Oxley, the, the boat captain. And there's all the crew. Rodney Daniels there, I can see. Dylan Clark. We're just waiting for the skipper yeah. owner, are we? No, Where he's there. He? Christian's there at the back in the black jacket standing up. Oh, there he yeah. is, yeah, without any headwear. Yes. I don't know who went in the water. Did he go in the water? Someone went in the water. So there's the victorious crew. Oh, they're getting the cup back. There's the Commodore Arthur Lane handing the cup back to them. But remarkable we can have a duel like that, Pete, after all those miles and shows how close these boats and crews are. Well, I wonder which member of the crew... I think it was Tony Mutter that went in the water. And right. He's, he's, but who was tasked with the job of fixing that furler, which uh, let them down on Sydney Harbour? In the end, it probably didn't make that much difference. Uh, uh, Jimmy <laughs> Spithill said that, you know, maybe it helped them to still well, have that sail up when they the got around the, the day, turning but, mark. But they yeah. did a, a 360 jibe, which would have cost them a bit of time. Um, but who knows? Do the furler had to work <laughs> yes, <laughs> coming overtime. up the river yeah, today. Yeah, but if they'd lost by 58, 51 seconds, you might have looked at that moment. But who cares now? It's uh, it's all all history, and they will go into the record books as the line honours winner in this seventy eighth edition of the Great Rolex Sydney to Hobart race. Yeah. I thought that seven second margin might be top there at one stage. It even looked like we're we going to get a dead heat across the line. Uh, is there going to be just a bow sprit between them? Does the whole yacht have to cross the line no, or no, as soon as you touch it? Yeah. OK, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I was thinking we might have to go down to that sort of no, minute no, no, no. Uh, distance to decide the winner. But, uh, yep, that, the yes. final jibe told the story is Andrew Comanche, who has tasted line on as success four times and this is perhaps the swan song for yeah. John Herman winning and this charter of this overseas owned Super Maxi would have liked to have finished on a winning note but uh, well given what it, they've done to Law Connect over the last uh, three years I guess they, uh, they'll they accept second place but not willingly No, beaten at the post but uh, as I said earlier they should be congratulated for doing what they've done for the sport here in Australia by bringing this boat out and really making the Hobart race something special um, and giving people the opportunity to sail on the boat throughout the, the seasons and they've had a remark remarkable success. Just came up 50 odd seconds short today but they're getting a well deserved round of applause from their family, friends and spectators on the dock and, uh, and they will be who've perhaps never seen a yacht yeah, race before. Yeah, yeah well... Uh, they saw a yacht race this, after, uh, this morning, didn't they? And that, that spectacular finish. Uh, no other way to describe it, really. So the other boats, Pete, we've we still got to uh, have a long wait, I think, till the, uh, this afternoon to see when uh, URM, URM just are alive. in front of Alive. That's a tremendous duel. There's only yep. been a couple of miles between URM yeah. Group, Alive and Money Penny. Uh, well, for the last day. Yeah, I think advantage URM at the moment. Um, She's got 80 miles to go and she's three miles ahead of a live on the water. But uh, they'll be due probably five, six o'clock tonight, yeah, I think. So they're not even around Tasman no, yet. No. So we'll look at the tracker and just uh, confirm up to, what is it, about 20 minutes ago yep. where they were on the water. OK, 
okay, if I can get my technology working yeah, here, Pete. You your excitement's still there. Yeah. I know the adrenaline is pumping, Peter. Uh, you've done this race 31 times. Uh, what's the experience like if you're that close at the end? Well, I have no tiredness disappears. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I mean, if, if you're the victor, you forget all the bad parts. You forget the rain. You forget the, the lightning. But here we go. We're looking now at a live and U, uh, URM. URM. They will have been inside of one another. Since yeah. that thunder and lightning polka of the first yeah. night disappeared, they would have been able to see each other virtually the entire yeah. race. They've got a, a very interesting approach. They're, they're well out to sea. They've gone round this, tried to stay in this easterly or south-easterly to come into approach to Tasman, which is down here. So you see how far east of the rum line are they are, and there's Money Penny. She's come further from the north, but they're on the breeze now, on the wind. They could be just slightly reaching here, but the majority of the fleet is still back. Um, there's a few boats starting to come down the coast, but the majority of the fleet are well back in Bass Strait. You can see the starting to, a few boats starting to pop up there now. So they've got, they're getting sou'westers there, so they're making good progress, but they're a long way back. I, I just don't think any of these little boats are going to figure at the moment, although if the breeze gets round to the west, they could have a fast finish. So the uh, handicap... They'll still is, be pushing hard. Oh, absolutely, they're absolutely. They're well, still you, a chance. Would to, they know that uh, yeah, the line know, honours has been decided? They will know, yeah. yeah. I would think with their computers, they, they know all the up-to-date information. Um, so we'll see on the handicap. It'll give each boat what time they've got to finish to win. Um, and the, to beat Law Connect, who's the clubhouse leader. See that red writing we've got there tells, say, Mistral, a little two-hander from Rupert Henry. He's got to finish by 29th of December, which is tomorrow, by 8 o'clock tomorrow night. In so. that two-handed duel, Kraken yep. 3 has taken over the lead and that's the, the, the uh, DSS representatives from the Derwent Sailing Squadron in Robbie Goff and John Saul yep. from Tasmania. Dr John. Yeah. The head of the uh, AMA in Tasmania and I know they really set themselves to win the two-hander this year and perhaps with an outside thought of, of winning overall if the weather should have suited. Well, they've, got a, they've got a fair time to go. They've got to be in... To 10:46 a.m. on the 30th, so but they're still they're not even halfway. So I think it's really too early to, to put these boats in the mix as yet. Um, there's still a lot to lot to play out, a lot of weather to, to go through, and they've still got 350 miles to get to the finish. Um, so the connections of Law Connect will be just watching themselves perhaps go up the standings. Currently fourth. I, I think time, but I, they're, they're I, home. I think they'll be watching the, bo the bottom of a beer glass. <laughs> I don't think they'll give a, a continental about the handicap at this stage. That might come come to light tomorrow. But at the moment, it's all about the line of victory. When we first started our uh, telecast this morning, there were not too many people down here. Hobart uh, uh, took a while to wake up, but when it did, they just came from everywhere on the water, on the land, and the media. They've got wind that something very exciting has happened today and they're all out behind us here on the, the King's Pier Marina waiting for the uh, the interviews which uh, can't be done while the crews are still on board the, uh, the yacht. They've got to uh, get onto dry land. So um, Nicole Browning... Uh, Brown has been very uh, firm with them that they, they can ask their questions when... Uh, all the uh, on-board activities have taken place and the, the winning owner-skipper will be there and the presentation's bare at the moment. Gordon Bray is just getting makeup, uh, getting his hair done uh, and he'll be there to MC the <laughs> That'll take the a while now, Gordon. He's got to put the spray tan on too, Pete. Speaking of media, <laughs> I just see Amanda Lowham uh, yeah, she's with her uh, foot in a moon boot. I don't know uh, if she's come a cropper on board a yacht at no, some no, stage? No, she's had it on for a while. I saw her in Sydney. Um, we're just about to go to the press conference. Here we go. Oh, it is. I can't believe that result. Uh, honestly, it's a dream come true. I never thought it was possible, actually. Talk us through that uh, the moment where you, where you took the lead. Uh, the fraction of a second, a fraction of a minute at least. Well, we, 
the lead changed several times, and I think that um, we didn't think we because they took the lead pretty close to line. We thought we were there's no way we could get it back, but it really is. Wind gust came around and records it happened, um, so it was a complete surprise to be honest. How were the nerves on board while all, all that was playing out? Well, you know, these guys sort of couldn't watch it and stuff like that. <laughs> it was it was very nerve wracking. Yeah. When did you really feel you got it, Christian? When did you start to get excited? Oh, look, not until right at the end. <laughs> you know, we we thought we'd definitely lost it like 15 minutes before because they were three miles ahead of us, kind of, kind of thing. So, yeah. What do you think got you the win today? Was it well, today on the river, or was it earlier on in the race? Oh no, look, I think if you look at it, there's two guys that really are instrumental: Tony Mutter and Chris Nicholson. Um, and they had a lot to contend with. I mean, firstly, there's really three things. Firstly, the boat, I jokingly call it a shitbox, but compared to Comanche, it honestly is a shitbox. Like if you, I know it looks good on TV, but you go up and close to that boat, it's as rough as anything. And Comanche is a beautiful boat that's better in every way. It's four tons lighter, etc. So the fact that they can make that boat beat Comanche is amazing. Secondly, um, they had a pretty lean budget, and thirdly, they had five corporates, including me, on the boat to deal with. Right? None of us know all that much about sailing, so to have all of that and still win the race, it's actually an incredible feat. I think. What do you think of that boat now, then? Oh, <laughs> do you want to buy it? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a good afternoon to sell it when it beats Comanche. <laughs> it's probably its highlight of its career, I'm sure. Will you come back again next year for it? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Same, same boat. Yeah. yeah. One extent is it all the sweeter for those three times you came second? Oh well, sure. And there's a, I, I think I came 24th, and then I came fourth, and then three times second. So, you know, it does make it you appreciate it more for sure. Look, broadly the strategy is always to watch them and if they get into a bad spot, we avoid that bad spot. So that's broadly the, the concept. Tony Mutter and Chris Nicholson could give you more details because I was actually at the front of the boat um, acting as sort of ballast. Those guys are at the back doing the tactics and steering so they can answer that very well. You said the other day that um, you had some damage that ripped up a sail. What, what kind of damage did you experience on the way down? Well, it was one of our running sails and we ripped it completely so it was totally ruined um, and that was during one of those squalls on the first night. Anything else did you? No, nothing of significance else. We had, oh no, we had, on the coming out of the heads, one of our ropes broke, the filling and we, that was really easy to fix but it caused a lot of problems at the start, that's why I had to do that jibe just out the heads, that was a pretty scary moment actually, we almost went into the spectator fleet. So. Have you got a protest flag going there? No, or do we? Maybe, maybe. maybe. But definitely maybe. <laughs> What's that about? Tony, come and answer these questions. These, <laughs> this, is, this man will knows more than I do. This way. Oh, yeah, yeah, hi. Nico. Uh, yeah, we did, um, we did notify the race committee that we um, were flying a protest flag and we notified them that we were talking about redress for an incident during the, during the race that, that we, uh, we thought affected our performance. So we're, we're in dis still in discussions as a team as to what we're going to do with that. What was the incident? Um, oh, we'll discuss it as a team. I don't want to put that out in the public. Did you stop racing? Or did you yeah, we happened? slowed down for half an hour. Yep. So it's worth stand standby for a boat we thought was in distress. Is that the magic? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's no, yeah, to be perfect, yeah, just to make sure you're perfectly clear, there was no intent on their part to uh, create that problem. Absolutely not. So we're not, we're not, not suggesting that at all. Okay. And coming up the river there, the lead changed like four or five times, you know, sort of lost count. One stage you're in front, next minute you're become, uh, I think at one point off Sandy Bay you were drifting backwards a little bit. What was it like on board at that point? High stress. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean we had, um, we, you know, when I, I think when we had the first pep talk before we even started, I said to everyone, look, just make sure we don't give up um, this race the way it was. And I thought in a different context, I was expecting us to be dropped or something with a big bad cloud and them to put 30 miles on us. And I kept saying, well, that'll happen in reverse, no, no doubt, later in the race. So. 
I didn't know it was happening right at the end, like that, but um, it was good for TV. <laughs> Everybody, Christian said he couldn't believe that you actually got over the line first. What, did, what do you think? I couldn't believe it either. <laughs> it was, um, I mean, a testament to the crew and, um, and and the team and how well they sailed, and we just knew we knew it was on um, at a certain point. You know, like when we just started entering the last headland, it was like, hang on a minute, I think we've got a chance here, and um, that's when we sort of refocused almost and had a, had a crack. Christian's are very complimentary about the boat. What are your thoughts on, on the boat? It's for yeah. sale, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he calls it an S-Box. What do you think? Uh, I think you can see how much paint's missing behind this uh, banner here on the front. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it needs a bit of paint. She'll probably come scrub up all right. <laughs> I think compared to Comanche, Comanche's yeah. a much better boat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, trust me. Yeah. We had difficulty with spectators. I think it's pretty pretty fair that everyone had troubles with the spectator boats. That's part of it when it's so busy. It all happened at the start of the race and it happens at the finish. That's and, and we have to manage that as well as we go. Christian, what did you think of the welcome that your reception when you got here to Hobart? No, it was great. It was, it was a good time to come in during the day and um, it was very, very nice to get a great welcome. You're not very good on the champagne spray, though, are you? <laughs> well, I've never done it before. I, I need some more practice. <laughs> All right, maybe next year. Yeah, yeah. It'll be better. Got a year to practice. Yeah. I know you're here and having a good time, but you know the little boats are going to cop it out there. How do, how do you feel about those guys? I mean, they, they do pretty hard, do it tough out there, don't they? Yeah, like I, I feel sorry for them, and I think it will be tough, but probably very satisfying as well. I think. Um, I've never sailed in a little boat, but I'd like to try it one day because um, it's kind of when you go on a big boat, it's it's fast and you know, you, But I think the small boats really get the action more. You know. It's a proper test. Yeah. You're gonna try that next year, then, Tony? No. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Welcome to Hobart. Yeah. Thank you. Well, that's one of the uh, more entertaining uh, press conferences that uh, I've been able to ear wig on. Christian Beck, some great quotes there. Uh, I think you heard what he described his boat as, uh, an S-box, if I can uh, be so bold as to uh, just uh, truncate his description a little bit, but I think you get the drift. And we did see the paint uh, off the... Uh, the hull there at, uh, as it came towards the finish. Pete, come back in. Peter Shipway's been out, uh, well, perhaps just uh, getting his breath a little bit. But um, interesting, I don't know if you heard the press conference there. Yeah. The, the protest flag, as Tony Mutter explained, was when they stood by at one stage to assist uh, Andrew Comanche, who may have been in a, a, a bit of trouble. And, and so they're going to discuss that, and they might withdraw that, yeah. that protest. They just wanted some redress for, for having to slow the boat down uh, to stand by and that's the number one priority for all yachts out there. Uh, I don't know if they answered a distress call or just they realised that uh, Andrew Comanche was in some sort of trouble. Well it would have been interesting if the boot was on the other foot that Andrew had beaten them across the line and then they went for redress on time. Yeah. That could have played out a little, but uh, who, who There's knows? going to be a great post-mortem, I think, for as we heard about the spectator craft uh, and the effect they may have had on the finish. But it's time to uh, make the official presentations for the Lion Honours winner, Law Connect, in the 2023 Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. Gordon Bray is your MC. <laughs> oh, my gosh, I love my boat. Thank you very much, uh, <laughs> Peter G, and also Peter Shipway. Um, yeah, and some fantastic moments there, wasn't it, coming up the river uh, and in Storm Bay. And ladies and gentlemen, I think we can safely say we have seen the most incredible finish in the 78-year history of the Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. And as you heard uh, the skipper Christian Beck say, um, they literally snatched victory from the jaws of defeat on several occasions there. Um, a magnificent 
effort from Law Connect against the defending champion Andu Comanche. But welcome to the official line honours ceremony for the Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race, the 78th edition. It's also the presentation of the medals and also the presentation of the Illingworth Trophy, named in honour of the first skipper of Rani, the first boat that won the race back in 1945. I'd like to acknowledge our VIP guests here today. Firstly, the Premier of Tasmania, the Honourable Jeremy Rockliffe, the Managing Director of Rolex Australia, Benoit Falletti, the Commodore of the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia, Arthur Lane, and the Commodore of the Royal Yacht Club of Tasmania, Richard Bevan, who's guarding that Illingworth trophy with his life. I'd now like to call on the Premier of Tasmania for his greetings and congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honourable Jeremy Rockliffe. Well, thank you very much, uh, Gordon. Uh, welcome, everyone, to my fellow Tasmanians. Uh, you couldn't be prouder of a day such as today, the backdrop of Mount Wellington Kanani, the beautiful waters of the Derwent uh, River and the magnificent uh, sunshine. So uh, we couldn't be prouder as Tasmanians. And on that note, also, uh, also acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land of which uh, we meet and celebrate here uh, today. Uh, to those that have been acknowledged, uh, thank you very much, Richard, to Arthur, to Benoit, uh, to all and sundry volunteers who made uh, this the most spectacular uh, Sydney and Hobart uh, yacht race that I think I'll ever witness um, in my lifetime. And I had the great privilege of having an almost a bird's eye view of that magnificent uh, finish. 628 nautical miles of absolute endurance, uh, tenacity, uh, skill, uh, dedication. Uh, it's extraordinary uh, that we finished within uh, seconds between Andu, Comanche and indeed uh, the successors uh, Law Connect. Uh, my sincere congratulations uh, to Skipper Christian Beck, uh, all those associated with uh, the crew indeed of Law Connect. Uh, what a wonderful wonderful congratulations and a fantastic job uh, by all. Uh, extraordinary. Uh, I don't think, as Gordon said, we'll see anything quite like it. Absolutely incredible. And to those that are visiting our shores, can I welcome you once again, and also can I encourage you to uh, indulge in uh, what is also an extraordinary place of Tasmania, uh, where we grow the most beautiful food and, of course, produce the most beautiful wines and whiskies, our beautiful natural environments. Uh, you couldn't have found a better place of course, to witness such an extraordinary event as we've just seen an hour or so ago. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and my congratulations uh, to all on Law Connect. Thank you very much. Thank you, Premier, um, who will now present the medallions to the members of the Law Connect crew. And uh, I'll call them up one by one because it's a very special moment in their lives and particularly as they've finished runner-up in the last three years, but today they really cracked it. First of all, he's come all the way from Spain, the bowman, Carlos Hernandez Robaina. Mid-bow, Mustafa Ingman. Also in the mid-bow, Mitch White. There were four amateur sailors on board, four Corinthians as we call them, from Christian Beck's legal software company, Leap. And one of those was Paul Kimber, who was a sail handler. He is the development operations manager for Leap. The hard workers in the pit, Charlie Wyatt. <laughs> Dylan Clark. <laughs> 
Scott Beavis. And a man who's had a lot of a man who's had a lot of line on his victories on Wild Oats 11, Rodney Daniel. Another one of the amateur sailors from Leap. He was in charge of communications, the live stream of the four GoPro cameras on board. Uh, with the company, he's head of cyber security. He's their architect, Yihan Gunaratni. The amateur sailors, by the way, have only been training for three weeks. So this is a first time experience for them. And one of those was a general counsel with LEAP, Ellen Howard. And the fourth Corinthian, the client marketing manager for LEAP, Wenny Yap. Next, the crucial trimmers and helmsmen. Alexander Goff. He prefers Alex. <laughs> His mother would be happy with Alexander. <laughs> Trimmer Helm, Lucas Chapman. Engineers and runners, Ryan Phillips. Mainsail assistant, Simbad Kuroga. <laughs> Key man on the mainsail, Brad Jackson. <laughs> the boat captain, an engineer who supervised the, the refit of this magnificent boat, Ty Oxley. The brilliant navigator from the United States of America, Christopher Lewis. <laughs> Tactician and second in charge. Tactician and second in charge, one of Australia's most celebrated sailors, Chris Nicholson. and a very proud sailing master and second in charge. He promised the boat and the crew would perform to 100% of their ability. Well, in this race, it was 150%. Tony Mutter! <laughs> and finally, the owner skipper, of Law Connect, Christian Beck. <laughs> and now the Managing Director of Rolex Australia, Benoit Falletti, will present the Rolex Yachtmaster timepiece. We'll just make sure we get the uh, photo opportunity here. This is a very important moment. <laughs> and now the Commodore of the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia, Arthur Lane, accompanied by the Commodore of the Royal Yacht Club of Tasmania, Richard Bevan, will present the Illingworth Trophy to the winning skipper, Christian Beck. <laughs> A 
Again, another photo opportunity here. Well, I'm sure there would have been um, quite a few cheers at the Greenwich Flying Squadron on the North Shore of Sydney. It's a modest little club, but they were represented by Law Connect and Christian Beck here today. I'd now like to call the skipper to come forward and say a few words. Ladies and gentlemen, the winning skipper and owner, Christian Beck. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, I'd just like to thank the crew today. Um, there's, the reason I, 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 I'm very grateful for the crew is that if you look at what was successful today, I can tell you it wasn't the boat and it wasn't me. Um, really, the boat, I sort of joke that it's a shitbox, but it actually, it actually is a shitbox, really. Um, if you look at it up close compared to Comanche, Comanche's a beautiful boat. Ours definitely is not. Um, it's several tons heavier than Comanche. It doesn't have as much riding moment, doesn't have as much sail area. But this crew was able to make it beat Comanche, which is incredible. I would also add that Law Connect doesn't have a very big budget, so that makes it harder for these guys. Um, and secondly, thirdly, they, there's five corporates on the boat, me included. None of us know much about sailing and we get in their way. And if you think about those three things together and they still beat Comanche today, it's an incredible achievement. So thank you to the crew. Christian, just before you go, when you bought the boat, you said your aim was to be first out Sydney Heads. That was back in 2017. Then when you did that, you won the Solus Big Boat Race and you said that is the absolute highlight of my life. <laughs> but now you won the Rolex Sydney Hobart. Emotions, please. Oh, thank you. Um, look, I honestly can't believe it. Honestly, I did not think we'd have... I'd rated about a 25% chance we'd win. So to, to win is just amazing. And um, we were, like, an hour ago, we were sort of 20 minutes behind or three miles behind Comanche. And to go from there to a win is... I still can't believe it. It's incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, three cheers for Law Connect. Hip hip. Yay. Hip hip. Yay. Hip hip. Yay. We're just going to make sure we get our photo opportunities. That was for Law Connect and Andrew Comanche. Last photo opportunity before we wrap up proceedings. Are we all happy? We need everyone to come forward, please, to the front of the stage. Not too fast. Where they are is okay. Stay where they are, okay? Sorry. Yes. You want them up? We'll get the still photos, then the video cameras want you to come closer. Yeah. They're like a team advancing on the all-black haka. <laughs>
to give you a little pen picture of each of the uh, the yachtsmen that uh, come forward to receive their medallions uh, sets it up beautifully and uh, and the response from Christian Beck he <laughs> no wonder he's been successful in business I think he's sort of uh, underplayed uh, you know his commitment uh, he said they're, they're underfunded, but <laughs> so you can bet that a good proportion of his business, perhaps his partners, if he has any business partners, uh, are saying, haven't you spent enough on this yachting caper? <laughs> uh, but uh, it paid dividends today, Peter Shipway. Yes, it did. No, I mean, Christian, um, un- as you say, underplays his role, I'm sure. But, you know, it's, uh, it's great for the sport. I mean, to have someone like that to win after... Three years runner-up, um, I think it's great. Good for the crew, great for the race, um, great for the sponsors, um, and I think overall it it's gets down to what a finish. I mean, we've never seen anything like that since 1982, and that was the first time we ever saw a really close finish. Um, so yeah, I think it reads well for the race, reads well for the future. And he said he'll be back next year. This boat sadly won't be back, Andrew Comanche, but. He's coming to the finish or coming up into the river and uh, this is how quiet it was and that's when Law Connect got him ahead right the final jibe before the finishing line. He just rolled over the top of Andrew Comanche, took his win. And all of a sudden you see the, the pressure go out of the sails yeah, well, he on took his air, He yeah. took his win. It was great tactics by Chris Nicholson and Tony Mutter. And here's the catamaran which may yeah. have stymied Andrew Comanche. The, the skipper, I was out there on the water, he put it in full reverse and said, let's go, let's get out of here. Yeah. It didn't quite get out of there in time. And I know that, that uh, the authorities on the water will uh, have spoken to the, the skipper on that catamaran. I, I, I just get the feeling that... Um, Andrew Comanche might let that go. Uh, they might have thought that they were beaten, but th- you can see they were delayed somewhat in making their jibe, and perhaps they would have gone first uh, there on the line. Uh, you can understand why the spectator craft thought they were far enough to the north of that uh, f- top boy on the finish line to be out of the action, but they went... Yeah, I, I, but I think, I think Law Connected rolled him enough to get his bow mm. down and be able to jibe. There was the uh, the finishing boy on the, the finish line at Castro Esplanade and they, they got the gun first. And uh, by that stage, Andrew Comanche had, had put up the, um, the resignation sign. They knew they couldn't get over them and uh, yes. it ended up being 51 seconds. It could have been a lot closer than that. So that's... Um, the situation for Lion on is done and dusted in most exciting fashion on the uh, the River Derwent here this morning. So Law Connect uh, finds themselves in about fourth place on uh, handicap at the moment, but uh, this is on the water. Two have finished, and you saw them. This is the situation on handicap, and the Tasmanian entry from the Derwent Sailing Squadron alive currently leads, and they have to be in when, Pete, to uh, to take the uh, the major prize, the Tattersall Cup. Well, they've got to be in by 6.30 tonight, but um, they've got to be 11 minutes ahead of URM. But at the moment, URM is ahead on the water by three miles. So Do you think the conditions URM. which have freshened might favour money, Penny? Uh, no, she's seven miles behind URM, no. I don't think so, um, but as we know, as we saw this morning, anything could happen here. But I think at the moment the breeze looks pretty stabilised, it's a good sea breeze in the river. I think it'll get these three home. Um, at the moment, we can see Alive's got 75.9 miles to go. The lower rating, uh, she's the lowest rating of the three. Uh, sorry, no, that's incorrect. Money Penny's the lowest rating of the three. She's got 80 miles to go. Yeah, it's going to be close. Mm. Um, Alive's got to beat Money Penny by about 45 minutes. So, yeah, I think advantage probably URM, slightly over Money Penny, and then Alive, I think. Law Connect will tick them off one by one yes. from about six o'clock this evening yeah. to try and do the double, which by my counting has only been done on seven occasions. The last was uh, Wild Oats 11 in, in 2012. That's Were you correct. on board? No, you, no, you had... I, 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 no, I wasn't. No, 20, 2010, 20, I think I was. Yeah, yeah 2012, 10. she did the double. Yes, I that's did the right. triple, I think. 
got the race record as well that year. Lion handicap and race record. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that's uh, a lot to play. We're still 90 odd boats still in in the race. We just have a look where the little tail end Charlies are. Um, still a long way to go. I think they're only. We'll just go to line honours, and then we'll have a quick look here. And then we'll probably say good morning for a little while. We'll just go down here, Pete, and the final boat, Silver Fern. S Five four hundred ninety nine point eight miles to go. <laughs> so there so go. they're inside the last five hundred miles. <laughs> yes. That's great going. I yes, said yesterday they were a New Zealand entry, given the name Silver yes. Fern. Yes. She's a seventy two foot uh, steel hulled yeah. vessel which has sailed around the world for about ten years, but it's been bought by uh, the Queenslander. Um, David Howes, and uh, he was looking for a comfortable journey south, and that's obviously what they're having. Uh, they might be here in 2024. Comfortable and slow, definitely 2024, yeah. And uh, Sylph 6 and Salt Lines, sort of sister vessels, they're going to be uh, fighting it out for Tail End Charlie as well. But at the moment, uh, those smaller boats have got it all over the 72-footer there at the uh, tail of the fleet. So we've had no... Um, uh, Boats pull out overnight, which is great news. Um, so we've still got uh, 92 racing, so uh, that's 11 that have uh, had to withdraw from the race this year. And the two-handers, three of the, uh, four of the 15 have had to pull out. So the two-handed division currently being led by another Tasmanian boat, uh, and that is Kraken 3. A uh, lot still to be decided in the 2023 Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. Uh, we'll be back with our next update at 4 o'clock. Uh, that's Eastern Australian summertime. Make your uh, calculations for wherever you are watching around the world to join us then. But if anything in terms of uh, overall uh, the situation for the, the major prize, the uh, handicap winner of the Rolex Sydney Hobart should occur between now and then, we'll be going live. So uh, if those uh, maxi chases are coming up the river and they're going neck and neck, as it's looking like they m well might, then we'll come back and show that to you live. But one would think it's going to be after four o'clock this afternoon because they're not yet into Storm Bay. So Peter Shipway, uh, it's been a very exciting morning here in Hobart. So we'll uh, take a break. And uh, for the people watching here on the wharf, thank you for being so enthusiastic no, and fantastic. out on the water, hasn't been it? Fantastic. It's been a yeah. morning to remember in Hobart. Uh, this the 78th edition of the Rolex Sydney Hobart. The first major trophy has been presented to Law Connect Line Honours. Uh, we'll wait to see what happens to the rest of the silverware through the uh, next three or four days. But uh, on behalf of uh, uh, Gordon Bray and all our Hype TV crew, um, out on the water, Lisa Darmanin and Peter Shipway. Uh, thanks for your company here this morning. The sea breeze has come in nice and early, so uh, if they do get into the river here, they'll really race across the finish line this afternoon sometime. Uh, thank you for your company this afternoon. We look forward to uh, seeing you later on today.